Hi, I'm D Ocean. This is D Ocean's Deep Woo, and woohoo! Do we have a message for you? That's why I'm wearing this messenger cap. We have Lady Spellbreaker 1313 and some very important information. You don't want to miss this. So I'm going to put on the uh, little movie I have in the beginning here, the little intro, and we're going to wait for people to file in. But I'll see you on the other side of that, okay? Whoa!
<laughs> Hello, I was playing along. <laughs> How are you doing today? My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. We are embarking on an important month here pretty soon. We're halfway through March, ain't we? Woohoo! Woohoo! And March has already been quite a ride. Oh, geez, has it been a ride? Okay. I am the ocean of the oceans, Deep Woo. This is my channel. We're all about doing the woo, the deep woo, the really, really freaking deep woo. Okay. Well, this is going to be that tonight. And I do have some supplemental viewing for you. Um, I haven't posted it yet, but I will after the show. Uh, the link that I saw about um, the connection with the, <laughs> of all things, the uh, solar eclipse, the Jewish alphabet, the Nineveh message and prophecy and prediction, whatever you want to call it, and um, all kinds of things <laughs> that are going on this month. We have um, April Fool's Day, uh, the same day Mercury goes retrograde. What do you think that's going to look like? I mean, we're talking about the little trickster going retrograde on April Fool's Day. Oh. I mean, you know, backwards Mercury is absolutely the trickster. And then the eighth, we've got the eclipse in the middle of a Mercury retrograde. Oh my gosh. Right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's going to be like that, folks. And it's going to be crazy. And here to help us uh, with some of those important dates and discuss all that. Is Lady Spellbreaker 1313, our own Lady Spellbreaker 1313. May I remind you before we really get rolling and get started here that uh, this program is sponsored by me, me, and me. And um, <laughs> so if you like the content, will you please consider, just consider it, just just think about, well, actually, will you please? You can join my Patreon for free. Yeah, I mean, free, free, yeah. Yeah, there's that option because I know because some people have done it. Or you can upgrade to a dollar, and guess what? Um, as we get some paid members, you're going to get some perks. One of your perks you're going to get as a paid member is um, you're going to get an extra card a month, an extra two cards, because that's twice a month that we do that. In the future, you're going to get access to special readings, private readings. You're going to get access to uh, shows that we're not going to put on here because um, they're going to be private for a good, very good freaking reason. Okay. So um, there's going to be stuff like that in the offing, but. And uh, I'm working on some swag, okay? I've also got my um, PayPal link in there if you want to just be nice and give me a little gift because I'm so nice. Or uh, we got my uh, Timu link if you want to click that and become addicted to their stuff. And some people say it's Chinese spyware, but what isn't anymore? So... Uh, but, uh, yeah, and let's see who all we got here. We are we getting, yeah, we're getting some people in. We got okay, my stream yard's telling me five. I am Pam, Woo. Alexander the Ganja Shaman, Lady Spellbreaker. Whoa, okay, Jackie, okay, and who else? Puck Elf off the hook. Indy Groove. Mr. Indy Groove. Indy Groovy. He's Groovy. Indy Groove.
Let me see if I can. Okay, Lady Spellbreaker, I sent you the link. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's the thing. You're, you're going to have to have some self-restraint. Yeah, if you go on Timu, you are going to have to have some self-restraint because it's kind of like the dollar store, you know? You're going to save so much money that you're going to go broke if you're not really careful. Yep. It's very possible. Now, of course, if you're worried about giving them your information, I go through something like Afterpay or Klarna or PayPal or whatever. You know, you can go through some kind of a pay app, some kind of a money app. So, so you don't have to give them your info. They know me as, I think they just know me as D Ocean right now. <laughs> they don't even know my real name. So, uh, yeah, so anyway, that's the way I'm handling that. So spyware or no spyware, I ain't, I ain't giving them hardly anything. Now, there is a program for influencers I'm thinking of, and if I go for that, I'll have to give them more info. But um, there is an influencer program where they give you all kinds of freebies, and then you advertise for them, kind of. So it's kind of a sponsorship. and uh, so. I'm working on that. Anyway, uh, I'm thinking about it. I'm considering it. I'm not sure I'm going to do it yet, but I'm considering it. So, uh, are you coming on yet? Yes, you are. Yes, okay. Without any further ado, or even a don't, here is the gorgeous ladies. Hello. <laughs> Beautiful souls, you know I'm I'm brush I'm growing my hair out and it's doing some things of its own. How are you doing? You know what? You look good with or without your. Come on, this is not really a standard of what you know. Come on, with or without your hair, I look good with or without. I I you know, you know, I, I take my hair my off sometimes. I this is my hair, but sometimes I take my. I take my hat off, I had to take my wig off, and it's like they still love me anyway, and they still love you anyway. And because we're we're not ugly souls, so no, we're not. You're ever a beautiful soul. So have you ever heard of the book called God Don't Make No Junk? I not well, I have heard that phrase for sure many God times. God don't make no junk. <laughs> That's right. You know, oh, thank you, weird Pam. just happened. I want to share with you guys, if I can, real quick. Well, I got hey, Jackie. With my raw star friend, if you go to her uh, website, she and you sign up for her newsletter, um, she'll send you her writings about um, Mercury retrograde. Like because she doesn't do a video on it. So hold on a second. Let me pull this up. I have a video about Mercury retrograde, but not this particular one, but I might do one. I might do one about this particular one because it's a particularly weird one. You know, and you and I were talking about Mercury retrograde um, because... It's, we all get this, we've had this idea planted in our brains that it's all these retrogrades are going to be such a tumultuous, scary time. But, you know, um, I don't know. I actually just got a car this weekend. My computer did just go out, but I'm wondering if there's the, the whatever, the big computer, the PC, the laptop. I just had to whip it out and hook it up and now I'm trying to log in and I don't know what just happened but you know I've really been manifesting a lot of good stuff even though times have been hard what I've really done is detach from a lot of these things going on on the internet and stuff and focus on the real world 
If you can call this even the real world, but, well, you know, the real, this mat is, the real honestly, matrix, but yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I'm just yeah. playing along. Focus on what's really going on in my own life. I'm playing along with kind of <laughs> their rules, but I follow my own and march to the beat of my own drum. I've really been going through a hard time. I turned down um, interviews with um, that film director, Life with Ghosts. I've been asked to be on that show twice because when I'm just really not feeling it, I, I just need to stay to myself. And that happens a lot with my grief. I think that happens to all of us. So we've been going through a lot. We've been really pressed in the last, in this last year, I'd say really pressed in the last few months, seriously. Yeah. So, you know, in the last few months, we have been really breath. Yeah. And by the way, I found my wallet finally where it shouldn't be. Oh, good news. Where nobody saw it to be. So I'm not even sure it was really there until it was. <laughs> Who knows what reality it was in. You know, I had a, a link open last time in your chat goodness gracious if i'd have to go back and watch that for four hours i can't even hold an attention span hardly anymore for some reason and i put a I link about mean. pluto retrograde in there in your chat and that computer is shut down over here so wow. i don't know maybe i could go in my history because it should be the same account because it gave be. a lineup of all the Declaration of Independence stuff. But did I put that raw star information in there? Yes. She's saying the pre-shadow began with the Mercury retrograde. It's got the wrong photo in there. She, her says May the 5th, post-shadow ends. But it's the pre-shadow usually begins two weeks before Mercury retrograde. So we're like in that season, right? This very second is the pre-shadow. And Mercury in raw stars. Um, yeah. Hold on a second. Let me look at my You chart. are a different kind of blue now. Different shade of blue, okay? Blue? Did you get that message? No. A ditch. You're, you've been wrenched in a whole different way. Oh, thanks. Let me see. Yeah. Hold on a second. I just got logged into YouTube. It's what you asked had, for. I just had to whip out my laptop because of my Let me just whip crashed. this out. In the words of Cleavon Little, Blazing Saddles. So let me just whip this out. You know... <laughs> March 25th is our full moon, and it's going to be a penumbral lunar eclipse. Yeah. Penumbral. Woohoo. Um, yeah. Let me get out my moon book. <laughs> Wait, we are, you know, we have got, oh, hello, Tim Off. Tim Off, man. Hello. I haven't seen you here before, did I? I don't think you've been here before. Hey, how you doing? Oh, there's off the hook. I see off the hook. I don't know if I shouted everybody out. Indy groovy, groovy, groovy. Yeah, do thing. some greetings here early in the show. And uh, Andy Groove got his wrench. He got wrenched, so. You've been here long enough, pal. I mean, but you, you're getting your wrench. Anyway, um, go ahead, Lady Spellbreaker. I'm just taking care of the channel stuff. It's got to happen. Well, it's fine. It, you know, it wasn't a coincidence you asked me about that Nineveh message because um, somebody had just sent me a video about... Here, I could drop those links if you want me to. That mm -hmm. link about the... Because the link about uh, the link I sent you did I sent you that link about um, uh, about the Nineveh message? Yes. Yeah. 
Okay. You if you can drop, drop that these? link, drop that one because I want to, I want people to see that video too, because that's just wild. Okay. It has a map. It has a map and the, expo the full explanation of the whole Nineveh thing. So they can go a little deeper there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember Tomas, man. And, oh, I was going to get out of my deck. Okay, listen, and my friend June is having a free tarot class. Um, uh, She does it on Zoom. My friend June, the author that had me on her show as a guest. I think I only was meant to meet her. The fool. I want to get out the fool card because you said it's LF, LF in the in the Hebrew. I haven't even listened right. to that yet. I it's making a, a great big. It looks like a sideways A, and in um, the Hebrew letters in the modern Hebrew, not in the ancient Hebrew. And this is the funny thing: it is uh, actually the eclipses. The three of them together are uh, basically. Spelling the first letter, they're they're creating or writing the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet on the United States while going through seven places. I mean, in the three three that are together. Now, these three together is very unusual. These three uh, eclipses being so close together. Usually, they're thirty, twenty, some thirty, some years apart. But these three being so close together is highly unusual. Plus, if you put all three of them together, their pattern, they spell, uh, they make the Aleph sign. And <laughs> even weirder, they go through seven cities named Salem, which is a version of Jerusalem, you know, which is where Jerus Jerusalem, and they go through six cities called Nineveh. It touches six cities called Nineveh. Comes very close to a seventh, but doesn't quite make it. There's another uh, Nineveh in like a nearby state, but it doesn't hit that one. But it's going right through here, and I can't help but think it's going to be real important for people here. So uh, we're, we're going to get more into that. Go right ahead, uh, lady. What if I send you? Heather? Oh, you can't pull it up on the screen without a computer. Right. Okay. Um, well, okay. In tropical astrology, this total solar eclipse, it says it's going to be probably in uh, Aries. And in the 13th sign, it's going to be in Pisces. At 13 so it's degrees, like right on the cusp. At 13 degrees, Pisces, actually. April 8th is in Pisces. See, because my mom's birthday was April 8th, and she was always considered an Aries. Yes. In your, in your my dad was a Pisces. Huh? Tropical astrology. Yeah, my dad was a Pisces. You see the sun there? Yeah. At so in your degrees. astrology, it's actually in Pisces, a water sign. Yeah, I just posted this on my uh, community chat. Okay, well, that's interesting because in that involved my mother and my father. <laughs> well, wait, hold on a second. Yeah, that's for the full, on the full moon, March 25th. What's it all about, LFP? It's going to be, the sun is at 13 degrees. I, that's not the eclipse thing. I have to pull that up. This is for the full moon I just put on. Okay. And the full moon will be in Virgo. I think the next two full moons are this. When's the full moon? 25th, right? Isn't it? Of March, yes. Yeah, in March. Yes. 25th in March, so we still got that to go through, and that's going to be a doozy, too. All of them are going to be doozies. Buckle up, buttercups, all going to be doozy. It is. Is Indy groove, grooving, his, uh, grooving his, his new wrench? 
Hey, what's up, Paradigm Buster? What, what's up? And Puck Elf came in. Well, Puck a Duck. Oh, yeah, the birthdays in two days. I told Puck last time that he's actually a Pisces. Because I'm actually an Aries Pisces cusper, and I'm April 24th, but I don't study tropical astrology. So my perception and the way I see things is very different than a lot of people. Because I work with 13 astrology signs, 13 constellations. I include Ophiuchus. So it's just a different perception. You know, there's going to be a full moon on my birthday. Well, it's April 23rd, so it's the 22nd, 23rd, 24th. And then also on my daughter's birthday this year, right after the eclipse. Okay, that's so wonderful for those of you Hello, who are cowboy. Cowboy. He's wanting attention, so he's kind of letting me know. See, so I got to show him. You show him in all his glory here. Okay, that's enough, cowboy. So, okay, go on, lady spell. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's Kitty right. Cake just wanted to attention. So, basically, you're saying there's a lot of folks that are actually Pisces that have been told that they're Aries in yeah. the 13 sign astrology. Yeah, and just mm -hmm. like there's a lot of people who were told they were Sagittarius, but they never felt that Sagittarius energy because they were really right. in Ophiuchus. They were really That in was me. That's me. I yes. <laughs> I and would have loved to be that lucky that. Pot, that lucky Sagittarius that gets all the luck, but that is what happened. That isn't what was happening with me. Instead, I was going through a lot of shit. So. Why Why was that? It was because I was actually no fucus. I'm a snake handler. That means I handle some scary stuff. And that's really what people tell me, too. They tell me, they would come to me and say, I can't go to anybody else with this. But I know that you're able to handle really dark stuff. So you won't be afraid. So I'm going to tell you. And it's like, yeah, that's right. I'm not afraid of really dark stuff. I've, I've I've been around it, so I'm not afraid. Right. Right. And that's Ophiuchus. Yes. And Ophiuchus. But see, I think you even got to be at a stage, though, like, because I've been in a, a coach for, for, like, my daughter in a state of psychosis through very dark, dark things. But, like, right now at this stage of my life, I tell my psychologist I'm really – working on deflecting a lot of things like how does she take all that heavy stuff from people all day long and not take it home with her and not let it ruin her nightly supper or whatever you know like because i don't know i i actually had to step away from a lot of things and really process and work on a lot of my own stuff i go through phases you asked me to be on and i told you i just really don't feel like it and you've asked me to come up when I pop in the chat for a second. And I say, you know, I just really don't want to come up right now. Sorry. That's okay. And I understand because I go through my times like that too. And I've, I've just had it. I, uh, and then as you well know, and as anybody who talks to me on the phone knows, I get called away. Mm -hmm. I literally get a pull and I can't stay awake. I'm getting pulled somewhere to handle something and I'm going to be out like a light for a while. And then when I come back, when I wake up, it's going to be a different world. But I literally have seen some of the things I literally have seen some of the things I've worked on in my sleep. I have literally seen it on YouTube. So hmm. I do go places and take help with things. So. You know, nobody can convince me otherwise. So when I feel that pull, I know I'm getting sent somewhere to do something. So I just go and I don't try to fight it. 
If I had a regular job, though, I don't know what the hell I would do. And so, in a way, I'm kind of glad I'm disabled because I don't have to have a regular job. And when these things hit, instead of being asleep on a job, I'm here where I can crash when I have to. And I think that's why spirit put me this way, put me in, in this situation, is so I can be one of those people that can go at a moment's notice and take care of stuff. Um, and odd as that sounds, you know, I know that sounds pretty weird, but I really do. I really do believe that's part this of the reason. This day and age, nothing's weird. <laughs> <laughs> There's all kinds of, I get it. Here, I found this about Pluto's transit in Capricorn, the astrological echoes. Hold on a second. You know, the last time that we were talking last time, trying to, about... Uh, Pluto in Capricorn because we think this is going to be a big deal because it's also May 2nd. So even in April towards, I would say throughout April, we're going to be dealing with Pluto's pre-shadow as it's getting ready to go retrograde in Capricorn. And Pluto is only at like two degrees Capricorn. So I was going to try to look it up that one night too. I was, I'm having a real hard time focusing, so please, everybody, just bear with me. I've had way too much going on with my mom in the hospital, and mm -hmm. my nephew was just here, and I'm trying to get, I, I just got my driving permit <laughs> after 19 years, yeah. so I feel like I'm 16 all over again. <laughs> Practice. Well, you are, so you better watch out, not drink. Don't go drinking. I'm not going to go drinking. That's for darn sure. Okay, you better not. <laughs> That's what got me in that predicament with the DUI in the first place. Uh-huh, see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I know. I was going to look and see when Pluto's dipping in and out. of Because I wanted to actually go over this. It says the... Um, Declaration of Independence was the last sign when Pluto was in Capricorn. Mm -hmm. And I have a feeling Pluto might just go tiny bit back into Sagittarius and keep creeping up because Pluto is the slowest planet. It's the furthest one out. It's often called a dwarf planet and not even considered a planet. Look at that again. Look, D O two. They tried did to you, make it not a planet, didn't they? Declassify why did that do planet? that again? Did you just see that celebration stuff again? Yeah, the uh, snow. What? Look why like does snow. it do that? Because this is just their stream yard, and it always has to do something with when I'm holding my hands up in the air. Um, okay. it could be what they call astral snow. But I don't know. Just it's like, why did a white beam of light hit me in the head? I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe the um, spirits or the uh, ETs are letting themselves be known that they are here. Uh, because we have been saying, they've been telling us, I've been, I, I've been hearing anyway, that they're... Uh, going to be showing us in physical ways, not just uh, on the astral plane, but we're going to have some physical phenomena going on. This may be part of that. I don't know. It is. It was an AI filter, like we said uh, we had a congratulations or something, and all this confetti flew from the sky. Congratulations, yeah. And I don't know how it does it. I don't think. Congratulations, no. When I'm talking, all this confetti just comes over my head. And nice thought. Really strange. But we're just going with the flow. So the transit of Pluto and Capricorn, it says this would be a tropical astrology. 
from 1762 to 1778 coincided with a period of profound transformation, upheaval, and the birth of the United of the United States as a nation. But Pluto is all about death, endings, um, destruction. Even Eris is even the, the goddess of destruction. That's on my uh, chart now, and Eris is actually in in Pisces. And so is Chiron. There's kind of a little cluster in Pisces going on right now. Back to back of asteroids and planets. But it's talking about Pluto's transit for political transformation in Capricorn. It symbolizes a radical transformation of political structures. Colonial discontent with British rule intensified, leading to re-evaluation of power dynamics and a growing desire of self-governance. So then it gives a rundown of everything that happened in those years when Pluto was in Capricorn back then. But I would think it would shift forward. I mean, like later it talks about resistance and power struggles, the Boston Tea Party, the Declaration of Independence and the Revolutionary War, formation of the new government, founding fathers, and power shifts. Now it's saying, it was saying that Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008, but that just didn't even happen until last, last year. Because Raw Star gave, it's a long video, I haven't even watched the whole thing, if you'd like to know the truth. Right, well, a lot of us tend to make these extremely long videos. I know. I fall asleep trying to listen to my own videos too. sometimes. I listen back because I don't even know what I said sometimes, and I'm trying to figure it out, and I fall asleep for my that, own video. Yeah. It's a two-hour video, but it's talking about the trains of Pluto into Capricorn, which Pluto is the slowest mover, so it's going to be in Capricorn for a long time. I think so. It's 2041. Uh, 2041. Yeah, I heard that. Um, hi, Elderberry. I'm not even, how is it that he said the horse king card got confirmation and how is that? I'll just, I, I didn't want to interrupt you. So I was going to type it, but I have a hell of a time typing in this thing. Um, I got this chicken Kabbalah book and I was guided to use it by my friend Hawk. And he's been studying magic and the occult for many, many years. Oh, okay. And let me look and see what it says about Aleph, the A, the letter A in the Hebrew letter. It says Aleph is path number 11. It joins with Kether, the crown and Chokma, wisdom in the tree of life. In the Hebrew alphabet, there's 22 letters, just like there are 22 major arcana. So if the solar eclipse is making an A, the A in the Hebrew letter, and that you would want to look at your 22 paths for the Tarot of Dreams in the Tree of Life. Aleph doesn't look like any other Hebrew letter, and therefore... And is therefore easy to recognize is that it has one long diagonal bar that looks like a banana separating two small yards. The yard at the top is connected to the banana at the midpoint. This is probably way too detailed and everybody's going like, what is she talking about? Aleph is spelled A-L-P. The three letters enumerate to 111 and means ah. Hmm. That's the fool card. Zero. Zero. This is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And the 22 cards in the major are going to match to one letter. Well, that's interesting because remember there was this song, What's It All About, Alfie? I know it's Alfie, not LF, but it. but he was kind of a fool hmm. in that song. Is it just for the moment we live? What's it all about when you sort it out, Alfie? You know, 
Are we meant to take more than we give? Are we meant to be kind? You remember that? No, I don't know that song. But that's a nice song. Mm -hmm. But I've never heard that song before. It goes to a movie. What movie? So I think it was what I I can't remember, but it's a song from a movie. Hmm. It was real big. It was, see, I'm older than you. So it was when I was a kid. It was a song like from a movie. That was back in there. It might have even been called What's it all, What's Up Alfie or What's It All About Alfie or something might even be the name of the song, you know, but the song is Alfie. But hmm. it's spelled with an F, not a PH, but it's the same sound. Maybe I need to look up that song and need to go through that song and see what it's saying. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe there's a hidden message there. Because he's like a fool. He's like, um, yeah, in the song, what's it all about when you sort it out, Alfie? Are we meant to take more than we give or are we meant to be kind? I believe in love. Oh, wow. Can I do that? Okay, I'm going to do that one. I believe in love, Alfie. Without it, life cannot exist. I'll be until you find the love you've missed. You're nothing. I'll be. Or are we meant to be kind? Huh. It's very, you know what? I got a funny feel. You know, because. Spirit talks to me in song lyrics. Oh, gosh, I got that over here somewhere. Bob boy, you garden it for me. You garden my stuff for me that I had over here to show to people. You garden it. He's gardening my stuff. I wanted to show you something I got. Let's see if he's, no, he's laying on it right now. He's laying on it. There it is. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry I moved it. Here, you can have it back now. Is that nice? Is that what you wanted? Okay. You know, cats, is that you would put something down somewhere. They believe it's for them to lay on. Okay, I don't know if you can see it. It's a little pin I got off Timu. And it says, I speak in song lyrics, movie quotes, and sarcasm. <laughs> Not so much the sarcasm anymore, but anyway, yeah, I got that pin off of uh, Timu, but yes, yeah, song uh, song uh, lyrics pop into my head when they want, and or they play a video for me. Sometimes it's a song. A, a lot of us have that though going on where we hear song lyrics when we're getting a message through song lyrics. So anyway, go right ahead. That's um, happening a lot. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, you know, but it's, it's okay. It seemed kind of this this Aleph is you know, there's a reason I feel like I was led to some of this information. And it started coming all of this so clearly, so loudly. I took I like would just put my headphones on blast. We talked about this before after Kayla transitioned. And I, that's when I drew that tree of life. I just would listen to classical music and just let the spirit lead. And then I was drawn to those tarot of dreams that go on the tree of life. And Hawk told me to get this book. And it says that ALP, the three letters enumerate to 111 and mean ox. In ancient cultures, the ox pulled the furrow Throwing plow was the supreme symbol of the fertilizing force of creation. Aleph is a letter of breath and the closest thing to the Hebrew alphabet has to a vowel. See, we were taught vowels are A-E-I-O-U, right? And we have 26 in our alphabet. But this is A-L-E-P-H. And then the second letter is B-E-T. Or it... 
B E T H, and but it sounds like bait, Aleph bait, Hebrew. It's different. Yeah. Well, Hebrew, you know, that's the thing. These people who are like King James Bible addicts, you know, they're King James Bible heads, and it's like, but that is, a, you know, that's the end all and be all for them. Oh, really? Well, and, and nothing's been changed in there, they'll argue, but they didn't have a letter J in Hebrew language. No, they didn't. It was a Y. So how did they have Jehovah and how did they have Jesus and how? Yeah, that's, they didn't. that's bullshit. Okay, I didn't bullshit, people. I'm sense. sorry. You're based on bullshit. <laughs> I'm sorry. If it, and it's just the truth. I mean, somebody might be upset by now by me saying that. I'm not saying God is false. I'm saying King James Bible is a translation. Yes. And they translated it to serve that king. Yes. You know, his translators were were set to work on that on pain of death. And he could do anything he wanted to do. If you didn't like, you know, if he didn't like what you made out of it, you were probably going to die a horrible death. Okay? So don't give me this bit about King James and good old King James and that BS. I'm sorry. He, he was, was not, not that not great a of a guy historically, and I mean, that's provable, huh? He was not a righteous guy. He was not. And neither was Christopher Columbus. No. Not Christopher Columbus was not that, not that great hero guy either, no. I've In got fact. these new Mary Magdalene cards. Hold on a second, where'd they go? Uh, Mary Magdalene. Hey, hello, Dolly. Well, hello, Dolly. Oh, I put them in the wrong box. And uh, those are my angel cards. Howdy ho. These are Mary Magdalene. Is calling cards me a ho again? Show a, a Middle Eastern or North African Jesus. Here, let me show you and see what you guys think about that. I asked my mom what she thinks about that. And her white Jesus. She's got my little nephew a seek Jesus books. My her grandson, my mom's grandson, my little nephew. And he said he needs to look at the Jesus book. So as a little three year old is learning to identify who Jesus is on a seek and find by being a white man with a brown hair and a beard. From the Middle East. This he he is doesn't the, really look very Middle Eastern. The Christ card on the Mary Magdalene oracles. Mm hmm That makes more sense. Actually, where do they have a J? Oh, and who who has that name? Jesus. Uh, that's Spanish. <laughs> it that's is. Spanish. Espanol, and it would and be it's actually a derivative of Zeus. <laughs> Zeus, yes, not Jesus. Yeah. Oh, oh, seminary schools. I see. There we go. There we go. Off D took seminary school. Exact. Exactly. Yeah, and I didn't, but I did a lot of studying, and I'm telling you right now. Most of the things that people believe are, are bullshit. Okay, total bullshit. That's why I say, you know, um, I'm with Billy. What's his name? Not Billy Myers. The other guy. He's a black man. Billy Carson. On a lot of things, he's right. Most of the most of the way that people have interpreted the Bible is completely wrong. Complete bullshit. Hello, Chloe, Chloe, Chloe. It's the Count and Countess with the one, two, three. We just know her as <laughs> Chloe. We have a we have a song that we wrote about her. But anyway. You have a somewhere. song? Oh, yeah, right. Yeshua is his name. That's right off the Yeshua. And Yehoshua for Jesus and Horus. Yeah, exactly. Horus, who is the like Egyptian Joshua. son of Isis. Yahshua, Joshua. Yeah, Yeshua. 
and it was never Joshua. No. Ah, thank you, Chloe. I love you too. And we said that's I love exactly you all. where it's going off with all that uh, war going on over in Gaza. That's like all the Holy Land. That's where mm -hmm. they were traveling around. Because we're actually kicking off. It's going to be o Ostara, right? Mm -hmm. What date is that? Hold on a second. We better look that up. Easter's yeah, on. Yeah, we probably should. Easter's on the 31st and Mercury. Ooh, it's a freaking Mercury retrograde Easter April Fool's Day. Lord have mercy. Oh, Lord oh, have mercy. Souls. Easter and <laughs> April Fool's Day are both in Mercury and the eclipse. Oh, Easter. I told you. Hold on. I told you it was freaking crazy, didn't I, folks? Crazy, crazy, crazy and wild. It's exactly why I said, do not miss this show. Do not miss this show. You're going to be missing some stuff if you miss this show. You're going to be missing some info. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Because uh, we, we're going to be dropping some bombs here. <laughs> As they say. It says Aleph is one of the three mother letters and represents the element of air. Guess what else? We're going to have an abnormally warm spring and summer in many locations. Um, it says the temperatures of the water are going to be much warmer. We're going to have a higher or more active hurricane season because mm -hmm. of hotter water. Hotter water. Hotter water. The spring equinox. We're going to be in hot water. <laughs> I believe it. I totally believe we're going to be in hot water this Lord, summer. Oh, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, I'm are we so going to be in hot water? I'm so discombobulated because I have got so much going on. I feel like my brain's all over the place. So please forgive me. Well, maybe it is. I mean, maybe like me, you are in multiple dimensions at once doing all kinds of things. You I know are, I am. You're right. Because when I'm try in my zone trying to do something and my mom's trying to talk to me, it almost makes me insane. Because I've got, it um, feels like there's information coming in from somewhere else that I have to get out or something. And I really don't have time to deal with the likes of constant interruptions and distractions. I feel like there are so many distractions in this world and we literally have to shut everyone off, everything out to focus anymore. And how do you think I got my driver's license and things? Because I stepped away from everything and I really focused my energy to make some shit happen in my world. In That's real right. Life. Boom. I'm That's doing I that I here away. too. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Boom. I've got some stuff happening in my life and I'm, I'm, I'm handling it. However, I've had things trying to pull me back. I'm not letting it stop me though. I mean, I've had somebody try to rip me off, off my, off my bank card. I had the, uh, my wallet go missing. I've had, um, uh, I don't know, just a bunch of crap that I've had to deal with. And it's like, I'm, but I'm still plowing through things anyway. I don't care. That's good. I, I'm going to just keep going. It's like, it seems like the energy right now is just keep going, just keep going, keep on swimming. <laughs> you know? Don't, uh, don't look back. No. Unless you're doing some shadow work. And that song keeps playing Don't Look Back by Boston. <laughs> Don't really? Look back. What? Oh, I can't remember that one right off. I don't hey, know. Is that Scotty? I might by the end of this. Or is that the pantsless one? All the time. Oh, Stara. I just got that card out, actually. Mm-hmm. So that's this is what we're beginning with March nineteenth through the twenty third. He's a present. 
He's the president of the ants. He's present. <laughs> Scotty. You are a present because you're just such a gift. Yeah. Yeah, we just talking about you. Aloha. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, there you go. Wow. Um. All right. See, I don't even have this. My stuff has been my calendar. I just turned it from January to March. If you want to know what I was doing standing up a second ago. My calendar on the wall was on January. You want to know how with it I am? Because <laughs> I got way too much going on over here. Yeah, I know. I have to be <laughs> careful. I'm still trying to make sure I write the right date down. Says the penumbral lunar eclipse is at 313 Eastern time on the 25th. Mm. Of March. Spring equinox is on the 19th. The penumbral lunar? March 25th. Eclipse. Yes. At 10 degrees of Virgo. Full moon in Vir Virgo. Let me see if I can find your link that talks about the penumbral because uh, something was going on and I didn't click it. Here, hold on. I'll get it again. <clears throat> okay, so wow. Um and I have been um very interested in somehow getting my house in order. But it's a mess. It's I'm, a freaking mess. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to get it. It's like it blew order. up or something. It's like it just went boom and I'm like I am getting it in line, but it's like, damn. Mm. Okay, I'll I'll click it and then I'll um I'll new, put watch we'll later. Open. Well, and this stuff is at the beginning of your live stream. If you need to go back and find it later, one of no, the main okay. reasons I still even have my Facebook open and stuff is. Because I still follow astrologers and people for energy information and just kind of planetary alignments. Like I did say June, my friend June is giving a free tarot class. If you look her up, she's on Facebook. I'm trying to get her to learn how to use her community tab, but she's not super techie. Um, her grandson helps her with a lot of things. She's the author who wrote the book, How to Talk to Spirits. And she, I met her through life with ghosts. I don't know. I didn't feel called to be back on that life with ghosts interview, to be honest with you. So, How to Talk with Spirits by June. She's given a free tarot class. If anybody wants to join, you got to check her out on Instagram. Um, I don't ever get on Instagram. That's going to be, do you have Facebook? I don't do, you know me, I'm not. Do you have uh, Facebook? Yeah, Facebook. There, that's the only place I like share stuff is Instagram and Facebook. I, I don't want any more accounts than that. I I'm broke myself of, not. I broke myself of Twitter. I broke myself of Minds. I slowly but surely just been, I deactivated Patreon. I'm slowly just cutting the cords and holding on to a the couple only, things. The only thing I got is Patreon. And that's not really, I'm not you really using that as a social thing. Exactly. Well, I really just went there to share cards and stuff. And it's not too hard to get sucked into the reason into these scrolling realities when I got shit to do in the real world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the only I don't thing I'm using scroller. it for is I to don't want to be a scroller no more. <laughs> I'm trying to connect to the people in here that come in here. I need yes. a way to do that. Yes. 
And, you know, as imperfect as it is right now, uh, that's one of the things we got is we got, we just, I'm just being very picky what social media I'm using, you know. That's how I am uh, too. Because I really, I can't afford the bullshit. You know, no, anymore. me either. I don't got time for no bullshit, to be honest with you. I like just, dis I disappear all the time. Uh, I just, uh, I just, uh, I have people message me and ask me if I'm okay because they don't hear from me for so long. And I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I'm really just working on myself and minding my own business. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Because I'm going, I'm actually going through a lot of energetic, emotional shifts. And I have, I'm not in a toxic positivity state. And um, I go, I got anger issues. <laughs> and some days it's best if I just stay the fuck away from everybody for their best interest and mine. Because I call bullshit on a lot of things. I call it like I see it. I am tired of sugarcoating and all that toxic positivity type well, of stuff. I think the rest of us are too. I, I think have no patience so for a many lot of, of shit us anymore. Are. None. I don't have a lot of patience for excuses because I get up every day and do the shit that I need to do right in the middle of my grief. I went out and got a job working third shift because I said I can. I can make myself go out and do these things and make these changes. I quit smoking cigarettes and then I quit even smoking weed for a while, but I... it. I was volatile and it was stuff was getting way too serious when I wasn't smoking. I even had somebody say that to me. <laughs> Heather, when you quit smoking weed, you were like, got real serious. And I said, yeah, it's probably in everybody's the best <laughs> interest if I keep smoking. Mine and everybody else's. Because I call bullshit. I actually just made a thing that says the cards tell me you're full of it. <laughs> Energy never dies or lies. So, well, I'm going to be the last person, and we're going to be the last people that's going to jump on anybody for smoking weed, you know. No, I, I think I'm going to have to do it for the duration of this lifetime to make it. I know because, some people who cannot be normal without it. They can't have anything like a normal life without it. Well, I have a lot of, I'm going through anger and CPTSD uh, with grief. Um, grief and anger. So there's like, and with everything going on in this world, I can't pretend like I'm going to be positive about all the corruption and some of the things here and, and just sugarcoat it all. No, there's some really fucked up shit going on in this world. And I've heard mm -hmm. Scotty boy say he's kind of angry about the lack of people being angry about stuff. We're just kind of like not, we're Sweeping a lot of things under the rug, I reckon, is the word I'm looking for. I am certainly not for sweeping any of it under the rug. No, not me that. either. I'm not, not talking about the fucking... And I'm a positive, room. I got a positive show, but it's in this way. Yeah. It's if you got some kind of thing... Now, you got a beef, that's fine. But... I want to hear what your take is on how we get through this. How do we, how do we do this? What do you see? How, how do you see us getting through all this bullshit? Uh, you know, how do we turn this crap around? Uh, this show is really about regaining control of the matrix. Absolutely. Okay. Our godlike superpowers, getting them back. Uh, Re-embracing those, uh, knowing, remembering who we are, that we are divine. Remembering that we're a part of God, that we're a part, you know, uh, we are all a part of God. And uh, therefore, we're all divine. We're and all we're, we're no more victims in the universe. We've all come here with a sole purpose. And none of us are victims to anything. Everything that we're going through is part of a... That's a very hard pill to swallow. But then when you think about it, think about this. Do you give baby lessons to masters? Do you give masters lessons to babies? I mean, no. If people who are having a really hard life, 
who were having it very difficult, very often they were highly adept and that's why they've got such a complicated lesson. So some of these people you see coming in with all kinds of disabilities and things, you know, uh, maybe they're missing limbs, maybe they're, you know, got other issues, you know, brain issues, maybe they got some other situation. Every single one of us came into a codependent household, uh, dysfunctional, okay? All of us, all of the light workers, all of them that I know of, came into a very dysfunctional home, okay? So, you know, but do you give these kinds of lessons to beginners? No, that means every single one of you has a certain amount of mastery or you wouldn't be getting these things you wouldn't be dealing with these things so you're a master you're a master or you wouldn't be get you wouldn't come in like that okay hey mark arc spark so that means i want to like you know you can tell you can you can talk about your troubles all day but unless you do something you're going to stay right there. You're going to stay right in them. Exactly. <laughs> this is all about transformation. This whole journey. This the whole show. journey is it's about transformation. choosing to take another path. If the path you're on is going around in a circle or a number eight, like an infinity symbol with a snake eating its tail, and you're getting up dissatisfied with your life every single morning, going through the motions, and you're not happy, your fucking life is miserable, you have a choice to jump off. You can even turn around and stop eating your tail and you have a choice to go the, the other way. You have a choice to make a new decision. And sometimes it's swallowing tough pills. Sometimes it's making a new decision to say, okay, this isn't working. I need to go out and do this. You know, mine started with setting an intention to get my daughter's ashes to the ocean. I didn't want to take a train and, and, um, I wanted to be able to go do it, right? And so early last year, I started, well, I had started working on my license right after she crossed over, but I had to take a break for a while and whatever. So then I really, when I broke away from going live on YouTube so much and things, and I made a decision to go get a job, that's when I really started setting things in motion. My my thoughts thinking about getting my license came into words talking about doing it and putting it on paper. If this is what I want, this is what I need to do. And so then I was like, all right, so I went out and got a job. I'm cutting the cost of this out. Done, done, done. Save, save, save and do this and this and this and manifest. And actually, I did so much work that my mom bought a new car and gave me her car. <laughs> so now it's just falling all together. And I got my driving permit. But I really had to step away from a lot of things so I could focus on, you wouldn't believe how much paperwork I had to do and how much mental energy it takes to focus, uh, to accomplish such a big task, especially with a lot of stuff going on my own brain is all over the place and i have severe anxiety but i didn't get it by telling myself myself oh i can't do that oh it's too much oh i just rather um lay in bed all day or maybe i should just stay on youtube all day and chat um and that'll get everything done that i need to in the real world no well, we both got copd everything off so i could focus it we both have COPD. I mean, it's it's not. It makes it very hard to function in in uh, society. It makes it hard to socialize. Makes it hard to, like I said, I tried having a job for a while, but yes. my health would just. I would do great at first. I would be great at that job. I'd go in and I'd really help them get their shit together. 
if they had somebody who left or something, which is the last thing I did. But then I would just wear it down and wear it down until I was taking way too much time off. And I was just pooping out. I was going to the doctor all the time. I could not keep up with the work. And it would happen that way every single freaking time. Well, I had fibro. I was beginning to get all kinds of other stuff going on. Now I'm actually out of the brain fog era pretty much. But I was getting brain fog because of the fibro. And I mean, if I, even today, if I eat or drink the wrong thing, I can go back into that fibro. I got to maintain a regimen or I can go back into the fibro fog. Which yeah. got me in a lot of trouble. Let me tell you, fibro fog got me in a lot of trouble. And Not being know, able to think like, right. That's the nerves, right? Fibromyalgia is nerves. Because mercury rules communication and the nerves are the communicators in our body. Like complex PTSD, Dolly. Complex, which means repeated uh, yeah. events. Chronic trauma. Chronic trauma. It's We've chronic. been subjected to chronic trauma, yeah. Over and over again. Yes. Repeated abuse. That's actually what I'm talking to June about because Kayla sent June to me and she wanted me to learn from June about what happens after a near-death experience, which is part of what happened. Uh, I love that new hat. Part of Thanks. What happened when I almost died in the fire? Just doors opened up, some freaking portal in my brain or something. And then she, right after that, right after I almost died in the fire, my daughter transitioned to the spare world. So it's like, bam, back to back, um, serious traumas. June actually told me I'm just far too sensitive to be taking on anyone else's stuff right now, to be honest with you. At my stage in grief and where I am, that I'm just really too sensitive and that I got to guard my energy well at even going live on my channel. That's why I'm not interacting with the chat too much right now because my brain is already all over the place as it is. So I'm not trying to be rude or ignore anybody. <laughs> But it's already hard enough. No, to I totally get it. I can't always do it. Yeah, you know, it is hard for me, for somebody with my issues. Very hard for me to run a channel. Mm -hmm. I think it's harder than probably an average person with some of my issues to run a channel. But you know, it's like I know I need to do that. I was led to do that. I was led to do this. Many amazing things have happened since I decided to go ahead and do it. I've had to deal with my ego. I've had to, uh, you know, pretty much uh, get over myself in so many ways, you know, and just do it. And I think that's what we're all kind of getting pressed to do now. You get the yeah. fuck over yourself and just do it, you know, do what you need to do. Yeah. Some of us that is a job some of us that is finding some other way around and it, like i said i think the reason that i got disabled is so that i could do the things that i'm doing on other levels that i wouldn't be able to do if i had a full-time job there's no way that i would right now be able to keep a full-time job because if i'm just going offline just without warning I don't get a whole lot of warnings. Sometimes I get, well, like I did with you, sometimes I get uh, um, some noises in my ear. It's like messages coming in, you know? But then I just feel like, yeah, I'm a, I got to get, I got to get horizontal soon. I got to yeah. lie down and do whatever I'm supposed to be doing. And like I said, sometimes I find out on the news where I was. You know, I hear in, in my feed, it comes up on my feed, what I was doing, because it looks like just like what I was looking at. But um, so basically I'm and, and then other times I'm in ultra, I'm in other dimensions. Sometimes I know that I've been doing, I've been told that I've been doing some of the work in the tunnels, which they're not letting me remember because that is very 
traumatizing, okay? The tunnel work is traumatizing uh, because I can open and close portals. So, yeah. um, so I can help clean out places. Not just of, not, okay, there are people who do physical clean out. There are people who do spiritual clean out, and I'm one of those. We do spiritual clean up in those yeah. tunnels. So, um, and that's all I'm going to say beyond that is um, kind of classified, I think. But yeah, it's like that is rough work. That is really freaking rough work. And I'm sure you're doing things on other levels that's freaking rough work, you know? I go through those things to even just earlier, like my sleep right now, because I'm working third shift and I'm, I am not working any full time. I went down to three days a week and I work six hours a day. I take a half hour break. So I really am only on the clock 5.5 hours a day. I said, this is all I can really handle. And I'm getting much more balanced right now, going back into the world, dealing with people, even just third shift like my co-workers are so full of freaking drama and I was just like oh my gosh my own psychologist said Heather you were in your room where you made a safe space and listened to meditation music you were doing breath work and yoga and on track and you went and jumped in the fast lane <laughs> and started working overtime during the holiday season. I was like, and I just freaking crashed. <laughs> I dove in head, head first without testing anything out. And you're right. I have been doing nothing, but I was doing nothing but working and sleeping. But it really, I mean, energetically. Yeah, when I was working... I didn't even, I couldn't even make a meal when I got home. Hey, do you know March 20th is an international day of happiness for Puck Elf? No, but I think we're going to celebrate it. Puck Elf's birthday. It says it right on my calendar here. The 20th? Now, thank you, Chloe. My best friend, Tiffany, I told her about running a YouTube channel and having to take breaks and stuff. And I was trying to understand energy. And from high school, one of the most valuable things my best friend from high school said to me was, Heather, you are grieving the loss of your daughter. And the best thing you can do right now is to be there for yourself. You don't need to be there for anybody but yourself right now. And I was just like, Bam, she just told me to practice what I preach. <laughs> right. She just told me to let everything go and stop thinking I need to help everybody else and help myself. <laughs> well, you I know, said, Whoa. when my mother died, I was going through all kinds of shit. I didn't have time to really grieve. I was too busy. When, when things were going down with my mom and stuff, when she was in the for a while, I was on. I I was uh, homeless because my in laws took the house, and uh, I did not really have time to properly process all that stuff. And I think it really did a number on my health. And then I got some physical injuries that didn't help any either. Well, damn. So later on, I had to process all that. And I'm not sure I'm still over it. And that's been 20 years. I'm not sure I'm still completely over all that happened to me back then. But it takes a while. I'm not sure you get exactly over the loss of a loved one. Exactly over it. I think you just learn to live with that. You learn to deal with that. Um, you learn to cope, but as far as getting over it, I don't think you do really in a way. And, and going, I'm going to sit here and be honest and reflect on the, on the moments because I began YouTube teaching addiction recovery, sharing, um, the things that have helped me the most from books to devotionals. I started incorporating Oracle cards. I wanted people to remember who they were. 
um, by sharing the power of the spirit and the things that we can do. This was in 2019, July 1st. I opened 2019 my YouTube channel. I shared the four agreements by Diamond Dillard. Then my daughter suddenly passed away. And it became almost an addiction to keep going live as a, as a way to not be sitting here by myself, if you like. I was on autopilot in complete shock. And when you go through, June is even really teaching me that going through child loss is absolutely one of the most traumatic events that somebody could go through. And she, um, one of the things that's called her even to me is the way that I'm working with my daughter to still facilitate healing and bring healing. Like my daughter leads me to people, uh, to June. She led me right to June. <laughs> on the weekend of her birthday and then i went and bought june's book how to talk with spirits and the same day i got the book in the mail a couple months later she messaged me on instagram and asked me if i'd like to be a guest on her show on 11 11. she said she couldn't believe how well i am doing in my grief because she's seen other mothers who have lost their child and gone through child loss or people that have lost someone not be doing well at all because they did not maintain the relationship with their loved one and that this the relationship that i maintain with my daughter and the way we're working together to heal the generational trauma and karma of, uh, of our family even is uh it it was mind-blowing that's you. right we're healing generational car that's what a lot of us are doing here we're not this isn't even our own karma that's the message that i got too a lot of this that we're doing is not even our karma the karma we're dealing with is our family's karma we're trying to clear the books yeah and it's a big job this is what i heard on christina lopes this shadow work we're doing and healing trauma and generational stuff is not positive it is a really nasty hard journey the dark night of the soul if you're really doing your work it's not glitter and rainbows it's going to be sobbing and dark times so everybody that's all it's everything's that all the light it's not Trust me, my favorite color is like black. <laughs> I wear black with I wore colors. black <laughs> for years. I wore black, everything black. I swear. I, 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 sometimes I'd wear a little color with the black. But honestly, I was a I was and you know what? I was a gothic kind of chick because I was making friends with death because it was just everywhere. Yes. You know, it was like I was trying to make friends with death. It's like, okay, death, let's be friends. You know, be gentle, will you? Because, but you know what? And it's interesting, but Pluto entered, when I think of it, Pluto was in Sagittarius before it was in Capricorn. But I don't know how that goes with your 13th sign astrology. But then I'm progressed Capricorn. So it was in, I know that it was in Sag back when all this shit happened with my mom and with my, and with being homeless and everything. I had just gone into a uh, the Pluto transit. And that's years. But then I'm also progressing into Capricorn and now the MFR is in uh, Capricorn. Hey there, Pluto. And what does Pluto represent? Transformation and death. It's the death card, right? Yes. Pluto was a god of death. 13, so, number 13, the death card. <laughs> One, three. <laughs> so I've been dealing with the energy of death for over 20 years now. For 20 some years. I mean, seriously, how... Uh, you tell me, I'm I, if I'm progressed into Capricorn, and it's just now leaving Capricorn in the end of the year for good. I mean, it's going to dip 
back in. I mean, that's I in your tropical astrology. In my 13th sign astrology, Pluto is at one degree Capricorn. It's going to dip back into Sagittarius. If you watch um, that, I can't pin anything to the top. We were talking about the special moderator, uh, managing moderator. I well, made I you saying, a managing moderator. I know, but I can't pin anything to the top. What are we pinning to the top? Hold on a second. Let me get this raw star video again. Click on it so you don't lose it. Oh, okay. darn it. Okay, raw star and the magi are astrologers, 13 signers. And they... See, and off the hook says death is my best friend. Yeah, me. He's my bud. Because I had yeah, no friends Scorpio with him. Because then, so I Pluto rules me, Pluto, and Mars. I'm a Scorpio midheaven. I'm an Aries sun on the Pisces cusper. Um, hold on. Let me type this in because I can't type different words that that are coming out of my mouth. Oh, we have though. got to talk. We My have got to talk. <laughs> we have okay. got to talk. Yeah, that is Raw Star 13. It's a two I think hour I video. saved that so, one already. Yeah, I know, but make sure you listen to it. <laughs> Cuz she think gives I, a lot of good information about just Well, it's saved for later. I can't listen to it right now, honey. Cover I know you can't right now, but later. <laughs> okay dissolving of the governmental structures and like i said pluto's going retrograde may the 2nd oh, oh okay now wait about... a minute wait a minute now you're telling me you're telling me i'm gonna have to live with pluto for another few years <laughs> hold on a second let no, I need to know. And then I need to start out. talking about what I promised I'm going to talk about Aleph and Nineveh and all of that. Yeah, do it. I need to talk go about more it. into that a little bit. Talk about that. Uh, because I said I was going to talk about that. Apparently, um, some people are saying that this is going to divide the nation, that the way this uh, thing is going, it's going to divide the nation. If you watch that video that I put out there, that was a mere something about a miracle, and it just came up on my feed. I didn't go looking for that; it just came up on my feed. Um, a miracle during the eclipse. What it's going to do is it's going to be the start of actual healing. The whole story of Nineveh is they had fallen out of grace with God, basically, by being idiots. And and just ignoring uh, ignoring uh, the universal law, you know God's law, universal law, and yet they were warned. They were warned what they had to do, and that they had to repent. And so instead of being destroyed, they were spared. Nineveh was spared. So it's the Nineveh lesson. If we uh, stop the stupidity and go back to upholding the, the universal law, then we're going to actually be blessed instead of cursed, okay? It's, it's like um, the whole Nineveh thing is, is a cautionary tale. It's like don't be idiots. You're bringing horrible karma on yourself. It, uh, they were given a chance to repent, and they did. And and you know what? It's like Off the Hook was saying, um, I saw my death, but I changed it. Me too. And the way I changed one of my deaths, <laughs> I saw my death multiple times. I could have been dead multiple times. I chose to stay. Why in the hell did I do that, right? It's a crazy place, but I feel like I got something I got to do here yet. And, uh, but um, basically, they change their fate. We can change our fate. We don't have to live at effect. We can be the cause. We can actually make the changes 
we can um, release what shit. <laughs> yeah, we are really the uh, the people that uh, that break this stuff. We're the people that are breaking all of this stuff down. We're breaking it down for everybody, not just ourselves, okay? So all of the curses and stuff that people, all of this negative, dark stuff that people are trying to come in with, come come up and say, oh, it's the end. Oh, it's the end. It's like, uh -huh. oh, we're all going to die. So that's it. Then it's like Ford, right? right? What is his name? Oh, we're all going to no, Arthur Arthur Dent in, in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Well, that's it then. We're all going to die. No, we're not <laughs> all going to die. Okay, we're not. And and I have my towel with me, and I hope you have your towel with you too because that was, you know. But but the thing is, yes, you can change your death. I changed my death. I was going to die. I saw myself die. But I moved here. That happened i'm i'm telling you i died in the other reality i saw myself die i saw it more than once but i moved here i pulled out every stop to do it it was hard as hell there were some very fucked up things happen on the way it was like everything was trying to keep me from doing it but i pushed it through and fortunately my friend paul came through for me or I wouldn't have been able to do it. And I owe him quite a bit. But here's the thing. Sometimes you got to do that. You got to make a choice. And yeah, you can decide. Do you want to live? Do you want to die? Are you done? You want to have to come back here and do all this crap over again? Not me. No. Mm -mm. I don't want to have to do all this crap over again. I don't want to have to be born to another codependent family. I want to get through all this shit. Okay, I want to get through it, get it out of the way, just get it done with. And so then I'm free. Okay, that's what I'd rather be. Okay, I'd rather just be free. So I'm getting, I'm getting the hell out of Dodge. You know, that's exactly what I did. I got the hell out of Dodge before it killed me. You can do the same thing. And it sounds like Hook did the same kind of thing. Decided you ain't ready to die yet. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, and you return and I did. I died and returned. I even died and returned one time. Probably more than once, really, though. That some of them just were not recorded. So yeah, and the polar shift, by the way, I just wanted to say the polar shift is going to be very slow. It's not gonna be a fast flip. We're getting help with that. We're getting otherworldly help with that. So we're not going to die in, in a big flip. Okay. You no, know, the Bible even says, beware of doomsday deceivers. I believe that's in Matthew 24. Since we are in the year 24, Matthew 24 is the coming of Christ. And that's all about the Christ conscious awakening. It even That's I right. I literally was preaching the gospel it's an inside job of Jesus <laughs> of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John talking about the second coming of Christ because that's what I flipped the Bible open to back in 2019 after I almost died in the fire. I would find a Bible and just flip it open and see where I landed and what spirit was guiding me to. to to look at. I started testing my intuition and where I would just be led to naturally. Um, I got a list here of all the retrograde planets too. That's what I'm actually feeling. Oh out. yeah, please do tell us. Okay, so uh, I start, they always start off with Mercury. Mm -hmm. um, and the first Mercury retrograde was actually December 13th through January 2nd, like of last year, you see December and then January 2nd is when Mercury station back direct. It goes to like three or four times a year. So this next one is going to be Mercury retrograde April 1st through April 25th, which is the day after my birthday because I'm the 24th. 
and then uh, the next Mercury retrograde is going to be August 5th through August 28th. And the final Mercury retrograde is from November 26th to De December 15th. Now, see, they say what we've even been saying is that retrogrades are a time to reflect on things and go over and things will be coming up. With the Mercury, dang it, where's in my astrology book? Mercury rule in communication. I was, I had to actually laugh because it's already in the pre shadow now. And it, mm -hmm. and then my computer just went down, <laughs> it won't boot up at all. Mm -hmm. Remember, Mercury retrogrades are for redos. Yes, redo. That's what it is, it's a redo time. Redo. I season. actually got to find that because I've already shared that. Uh, I think I found out why I've been having problems. This book that I have my, gosh, I need another case for this. Here's this black dust that's supposed to be suede like, make it feel like suede it's all coming off in tiny black particles all over the place that's probably why i've been choking on dang i'm gonna that's have to get a good. new book for this yeah i'm gonna have to get a new book to stow this in anyway um but redoing everything yeah i we mary and i mary wins in the chat one once upon a time, Mary Wind and I were in a chat and we were t thinking of all the words that begin with, with, uh, re, redo, re, renew. And so I typed something up and shared it on the community tab and I shared it over on Lady Free Flow so I wouldn't lose it because I don't share nearly as much over on that channel <laughs> The I share with things you? that I don't want to get lost in my community tab feed. <laughs> so I'll maybe go we should spell it re d a u re d e a u x or something. Rediscover. Maybe I need rediscover to make a, a picture to go with it. I think I saved it somewhere else because we're cut. It's. This is going to be Mercury retrograde and Pluto retrograde energy mixing together. And Pluto rules the underworld, death, transformation, endings for new beginnings, right? Because every ending, think of like even the numbers one through nine. I am a life path one. That's the beginning one. And my daughter was a life path nine. And she left this world on nine nine of 2020. So that's the ending, completion. It's finished. Here it is. When a planet goes retrograde, it means rewind, reboot, reflect, recreate, recirculate, redirect, reinvent, reveal, realize, review, relearn, reassess, rethink, reconsider, reevaluate, redo, rewrite, revise. Repair. Yeah, repair. Hold on, I lost my spot. Revise, is that what I said? Revise, I rediscover, realign, regenerate, rest, relax, re I, oh, rejuvenate, reality, repurpose, release, renew. Remember who you are because we don't want to repeat lessons. Life on rerun is no fun. <laughs> right. No more, re you know, real. If you want to get rid of the reruns, then yeah, get 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 it done. Get it done. Get it done. Yeah. Yes. And it's your chance to get things done. It's your chance to finish it. Finish things that went kaplutz the last time. Okay, on the last retrograde, if something went kaplutz, then now you can do something about it. Um, and 
I can read about Mercury real quick. Mm -hmm. Mercury is both the day and night energy and inhale and exhale because Mercury rules the signs of Gemini, the twins, and Virgo, service and usefulness. Mercury is the most non-binary. Isn't that interesting that people are non-binary anymore? Yeah, Mercury is that the is most, definitely a Mercury thing. Mercury is the most non-binary of the planetary bodies. And the fact that the planet rules both the Yang day air sign of Gemini and the Earth sign night sign of Virgo indicates this. Mercury is the first of the personal planets after the luminaries, the sun and the moon. Mercury is Mary, we were just talking about your retrograde. <laughs> with that little retrograde we were spinning off, all those words that begin with the R-E. Um, and think about it this way. All of the inner planets, the ones closest to the sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth. Well, Earth is where we are. Mercury, Venus, and Mars are like our personal planets those reflect our outer self mercury rules the way we communicate with the world and so the way we communicated as a child could be different because our this is where it gets tricky your your astrology chart progresses everything moves forward a little bit one degree the sun moves forward one degree every year after you're born so even mm. though you might be born in one side, you're progressed, and you already know this, is uh, in Capricorn. So mm -hmm. Mercury represents the mind, communication, the messenger, detail, technical ability, perception, and learning. So Mercury on the Tree of Life here is down here, which is Archangel Michael, which is H-O-D or Y-O-D. It's often spelled as Yod. So. Okay. I'm Mercury. not sure what you mean, Chloe. You throw what out? I'm not throwing him out. I'm not throwing the baby out. But anyway. Yeah, I yeah. thought for a minute the grasshopper cake was maybe the Klaus Schnaub eats the bugs thing. Hi, Mary Wins, by the way. Okay, so it go. What well, I'm sorry, go on. I got distracted by the chat way too much. It's all right. Mercury I'm not sure what's is, going on in chat. What is also coordination? Okay, think of this Mercury is also coordination, how our mind tells our neural pathways to coordinate. Our nerves are the communicators in our body. I've actually known several women who have more gallons illness and their more gallons is more active during full moons and things. I and got so rid of it. If you're having nerve issues, no matter what, I can't believe how many people in this world are having nerve problems. To be honest with you, yeah. nerve damage from fibromyalgia to neuropathy, and I don't even want to get in on all that. Right well, now. there's but, two. There's two fronts. We're being we're being poisoned, and we're also being hit with these waves. Yes, these yes. very disharmonious waves all I think the freaking being time. Is so serious for us taking plenty of time off of these devices i think that this i think i'm going to close this laptop when i'm done i think this computer broke down for a reason for right now i truly think that there's more to all of this everything happens for a reason please always keep that in mind even those times when you can't go live and you say you're having technical difficulties i think That's spirit right. doesn't want you to go live for whatever reason it is Mm -hmm. You'll feel guided to do the things. So depending on the well, I think so Mercury, too. I think actually, probably it's all for you know. It's it's not to hurt me. It's to help no, me somehow to protect you. Protect Mer me. Yeah. Mercury is also a deadly heavy metal. By the way, have you ever seen the movie Mercury Rising? Yes. And that's actually where Nevada, Mercury, Nevada is area 51 if you get off the highway it's called mercury nevada because i lived in nevada 
and God actually like drove me to, you know, when you get called away, I feel like I get called to certain places, certain locations. I'll go on adventures. I'm, I've been clearing energy in places, Santa Cruz, California for years, even making a crystal grid and stuff without even knowing what the hell I was doing. Spirit took over at the moment. Like it just became some type of ceremony that happened out of my doing. A spirit took over my body, but for a good way and a good reason. That sounded crazy. It happens to me. So depending often. on the placement, let me finish reading this real quick. Go ahead. Depending on the placement of Mercury and how we are embodying our Mercury, will tell if Mercury is debilitated or exalted. Certain signs exalt different planets. My Mercury in my birth chart is in Pisces. So the way I communicated was very Piscean and was very different. But now my Gemini, my Mercury is it is progressing in a Gemini right about now. My Gemini Mercury is the Queen of Swords is in the building. So the way I communicated is very different than I was as a child in my progress chart. So depending on the placement of Mercury and how we are embodying our Mercury, it can be curious, witty sociable and versatile or nervy over concerned with detail and even highly strong mercury is also associated with the trickster archetype so it's real funny mercury is going retrograde on april fool's day and we're talking about the sign aleph aleph and the fool card the fool. exactly we must become fools so mercury is associated with the trickster archetype the fact that the planet appears to go retrograde three or four times a year is indicated of its trickster nature. Because the Mercury retrograde is renowned for technical snuffs and miscommunications, the trickster archetype is one that turns conventional rules and behavior on their heads. Mercury is associated with Hermes, the messenger of the gods, it is the closest planet to the sun, our core, and transmits information from the core to the earth. So here is the sun in the tree of life, dead center right at your solar plexus chakra. If you think of yourself as the tree of life, the temple of God, the temple of the divine, your solar plexus chakra is right here in your diaphragm. The sun. Mercury would be more at your hip area. Well, no, that's still like sacralish. That's going to be right in between Mercury because here's the sun. And here's mm -hmm. Mercury right here. Your foundation is more uh, the sacral chakra. And this well, is maybe the root. Interesting. So that may be the left side and the right side. What's the directly opposite Mercury, Venus? No. We, okay. One side is masculine planets and one side is feminine. So this is Mercury down at the bottom. This is Mars. Because this is your masculine left side. Mm -hmm. Well, connect. this is connected to the left side of your brain. Which is right. going to the right side. Remember, you've been manifesting pain on the left side and me too. Right. Okay, so this is Mercury, Mars, and Saturn. The disciplinarian. Over here right. on the feminine side is Neptune, Jupiter, and Venus. Jupiter. See, I told you. Mercury. Venus is right opposite Mercury. Pisces. Yes. Venus is. And they're right both on the other either, side. That's what I said. And they're both either in front of or behind the sun at all times. Mercury and Venus. Those are the ones closest to the sun, right? In our solar system. Mm -hmm. Mercury and Venus. Sun. 
the moon mm -hmm. is below the sun and it, it's a foundation and the kingdom is Malkuth which is also Shekinah which is the feminine god in Hebrew S-H-E-K-I-N-A-H Shekinah yeah yes they try to say that, that the is a pagan Wiki. god and people are worshiping a pagan god and that they mm -hmm. Because of that phrase that we were hearing a lot of shock and awe, people were in shock and awe. They were saying shock and awe is a pagan goddess. Yes. Pagan god. No, it's not. This is Hebrew. You know what? Kabbalah is Hebrew. Hey, I hate to tell you because they try to say, I actually had some of the, one of the KJV, KJB people uh try to tell me that the hebrews were not into mysticism what that's not Ka true kabbalah is their mysticism their whole book is mysticism everything is myth the whole thing is Oh, these mystery religions. Christianity is the biggest mystery religion. One of the biggest mystery religions in the world. I think. So give me that shit. Behold, I show you a mystery. Is oh, 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 wait a minute. Does that mean Christianity is a mystery religion? Oh, no. Here it is. She's a Hebrew goddess, and Yahweh's consort is in the feminine aspect of God in Judaism. She's yes. the goddess of the earth, the mother, and dwells among her children. She's in this divine feminine deck. Shekina is. So that is really freaking stupid. I'm sorry, but you know what? I get tired of talking to stupid people. <laughs> I'm sorry. About their own dang religion that they don't even know about. Yeah. Oh, you better repent to God. Oh, your soul is on the line. You need your soul saved. You need. Because I had to be born again and again and again because I thought for myself and I was a dangerous person to these people. No, I know how these people think. They'll damn you and curse you in the name of God. Watch out, people who think they're so holy. Watch out, man. I'm not too holy, okay? I'm not holy, holy, okay? I, I'm, you know, I have a few holes. Like, if not, I wouldn't be able to breathe or see or anything. But, you know. But, um, oh, I got to say. Um, before I get too wound up, it's my two hour mark just about. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take a quick, just, just a moment off. Go ahead. Put in my own, put in my own little plug for, I got a new deck off of Timu. It's Oracle of the Mermaids. This is the next one we get to have along. So we're going to have the mermaids along with the dragons. And the unicorns and the mix, mystic wisdom. So we're going to have a new deck coming up. So just thought I'd show you that. I brought that along, made sure to bring it so I wouldn't forget to show you. And now that I have, I got that out of the way. And I also wanted to show you this kick-ass thing. I'm taking a, taking a break from seriousness for a moment. Which is this lovely taro taro tablecloth oh, that you nice. can also use as a cape? <laughs> and I got that off a of team of too. Not very expensive, so you can you can also use it as a cape, of course. But it's round, so you can put it on the wall or use it as a tablecloth for a round table or whatever you want to do with it. So um, I'm showing off. Right, cowboy. And I haven't lit this up yet. I'm going to do it in your presence. This is the two-hour mark. I'm taking. Because you know what? It's almost too much for me. I have decided that these shows, I'm going to take a freaking break every now and then. Do and it. And just do something kind of meaningless. But, you know, it's just something kind of cool and fun, maybe not. 
not terribly serious. Um, here's something I got pretty, I got this really a deep discount on some of it. Some of this I would never got, I have gotten if I didn't get a really big discount. You know, this is like a really t a time for fasting. Um, oh, I like that. My because cat. It's actually when, Ramadan right now. Uh huh. In many different places all over the world, people are fasting. Well, you can be fat. That was one of the things that Nineveh did. I am to repent. fasting. You could be fasting. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm intermittent fasting. My body just does things naturally. I get called away by spirit, just like you said. Mm -hmm. I, but I'm not just going to sleep. I get called away from all uh, lots of things. I fast. Mm -hmm. I, I used to see if I could fast from no um, social media from sunup to sundown and not watch any videos and not go That's to That's called chat unplugging. Rooms. Yes, unplugging. It's called unplugging. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but mm -hmm. see, I still have to use the mind for other things I'm doing, but I'm just not going into the social media world. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason so I'm holding this person. up, well, yeah, I agree. We we agree. Uh, you've been doing really well with that. I mean, you've been telling us, us about it every single time you come in. And I know you have been because, and you know, I have. You know, I'm not very much on social media either, right? Yeah. Yeah, you kind of noticed because I never know when anybody, but half the time I don't even know when anybody shows. The reason I'm holding this up is because I got this. I, this gave, They gave me a really, really big discount on this. But the thing that this reminds me of is when my cat Maui actually ascended. I got to see her literally ascend. She actually... The, the just like they say ascension is they um she turned into white light and rainbows and a rainbow portal opened up and she rose up out of her body and walked through this portal into this beautiful place and showed up again as an all white cat with fur that was like sparkly and glowy like this and like shiny she was like a glowing white cat which is like a lyran elder okay so this coming to me at so cheap i'm like i i don't know how much i paid for it but i didn't pay i didn't hardly pay anything for it and, and it's like, this is like a sign from my little girl, Maui. So, um, and you know, my cats are like my kids. So you, we're talking about your daughter and I'm talking about my kid, Maui, who's on the other side. And this reminds me of her. So she's going to be part of my decorations now to remind me of that event. And I think it's like really cool. I like so, that. Um, I just had to show you that. I do and like I, that. And uh has a little, yeah, it has a switch over here. You can turn it on and off. That's cool. So it plugs in. It has like a, it plugs in like with a U USB. So anyway, that's one of my things. My little, reminds me of my little girl. I call her my daughter. You know, she actually... Lyrans can turn back and forth from a uh, humanoid into like a cat into a more humanoid form. And in her humanoid form, she's uh, uh, she's a beautiful young woman who's, uh, well, actually a Lyran elder, but she has golden eyes, like the metal. Um, very different, uh, I know. That <laughs> you want to learn from a cat? The, the, well, the Lyrans are dead. Oh, by the way, that's another thing. The Lyrans are becoming more vocal. You Don't be surprised if you hear or hear from the cat people. 
I've been sound, I've been making cat noises like crazy. One of my shaman friends told me that I, that is a Lyran. She, she actually told me I was from Sirius Planet B. I'm one of the people who can navigate the dark and the light. I have to venture into the dark often to get people and guide right. them back. Right. So I have to be able to blend in. Right. Me too. And I have the Lyran cat energy as well. Yeah, me too, obviously, as close as I am to the cat people. <laughs> but li but the humans and the Lyrans, I mean, humans are like 35 billion years old. So the Anunnaki did not make the first humans. But they tweaked us, maybe. But they didn't make the first humans. Anyway, um, wait, oh yeah, well, you know what? The difference between a conspiracy theory and the truth is about six months. Um, yeah, I'm looking at chat, but yeah, my cat and my cats have taught me a lot through the years. My, my cat actually, Maui actually, when I was very sick and thought I was dying, she turned into a little fireball and heated up and rakied the heck out of me, put all, all four paws on me. And it was like I was, it wasn't hurt, it didn't hurt, but it was like I was being cooked. She was like so hot, she was like giving off heat like the sun. And uh, that was a cat. She had somehow learned, see, I rakied her when she was sick. She somehow learned to reiki me i guess uh or remembered it so i'm i'm like from being a lyran elder but anyway i'm there like my cats have not been normal cats have been normal cats whatever the heck that is my cats are usually some other kind of thing entirely like even a little cowboy i'm not sure he's really exactly I think he's different. Let's just say I think he's different. But um, I just wanted to, I don't know why I'm bringing that up. Look out, I, I, I okay, I think it's because, yeah, the, the kitty cats want to talk to us all. The kitty cats want to talk to us. They got you know, something to say. This is going to be a very special eclipse. Because it's also the moon, the sun, and Chiron are also all three going to be together in the sky on this eclipse at 27 degrees. I'm not joking. Chiron, oh. Chiron. I could show it to you. That's where you said I had my wound with uh, the yeah, recognition you know, yours wound. Yours is in Capricorn. Chiron in Pi Chiron is in Pisces right now, but Chiron in Pisces is the wound of faith. The wound of what? Faith. People who lose their faith, they start losing hope. Sometimes you got to give them their faith back. Look at this right here. This is the sun and the moon. A and Chiron all together. There's Aries, the goddess, Aries, the goddess of destruction. What is that? Venus? Venus will be in Pisces too. Mars is moving right along. But there's also the North Lunar Node, just this pile up right here. The Midheaven is constantly moving like the moon in the ascendant. Now, see, I'll post this over on the community tab closer to the eclipse. Jupiter and Uranus are still in Aries. And then the next full moon is also in Virgo. This full moon's in Virgo, and the next full moon is in Virgo. But this total solar eclipse is in Pisces in 13 sign astrology. 
to sidereal astrology. I'm so confused. <laughs> I'm glad you're here to explain this because I kind of get it and kind of not. Yet, 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 what, Mark? Well, you know, I'm still learning Mark. from Rothstar. I'm not actually an astrologer right now. I just get called to a lot of this. I've been waiting for this eclipse since the last one in 2017, to be honest with you. Oh, a wise guy, eh? Yeah. Yeah, Mark. I'm still learning what all the asteroids are doing. That's why I channeled every single card one at a time. I made sure I did them all. So I did every single planet last year in my readings. I did every single asteroid. I did uh, all the houses in my channel last year. I was thinking about doing shorts of the astrological symbols because I have the astrology deck. So I could do one short and read uh, what Mars means for the card. But I just really haven't had time recently. It does take a lot of time to make videos and make the thumbnail and edit the description box and put the right information in it. It does. It uh, takes a lot of time. It does. Yes, it does. It does. I am learning. I'm learning. Mm -hmm. I'm learning how to do that. As you notice, my description box is getting fuller and has more stuff in it now. I'm I'm beginning to get the hang of it. But um, it, there is a learning curve, my friends. There's a learning curve. Hey, Richard. Hey, Richard. The uh, Richard the Blue. Whoops. Richard the Red. That one video I shared is who's now blue. Second. Hold on a second, my friends. Um, I gotta put this. This one okay. Before you told me this, my other friend sent me out of the blue. Have you seen this, Heather? You might find this interesting. April eighth. Um Eclipse will pass seven cities called Nineveh. Right. No, only six. It's not quite right. Almost. There's a seventh off to the side, but it doesn't quite pass through it. Only six. Well, this is just the video this guy, the girl sent me, my friend. She mm -hmm. said, you might find this real interesting. And the guy in this video I started watching, it says seven United States cities. Then you asked me about this video, and I haven't even watched him yet because I've had so much going but it does on. Pass through seven states that have, have Nineveh, but it doesn't pass through seven, only six of them. Damn it. Nineveh's. A miracle to happen. This is the one you sent me. Right. Uh, honestly, if I watched every video that everybody sends me, I would never get shit done. I would be watching videos 24 well, fortunately, that one isn't that, that one isn't that terribly long. Not well, like I'm just saying. <laughs> but that one is gets real ac real i mean the map and everything and shows the path and she explains that only six ninevas there is a seventh but it doesn't hit that seventh one it goes right by it though but that is part of the message yes because the first part of the message is seven and the other part is six and so uh, and somehow she explained that why it only went through six and why that's even more miraculous that it only went through six of them and why it makes that message and I guess it's E-L which is L which is the L's which are the gods yeah, the Elohim, the Elohim, the Elohim. 
Ja il- Elohim, that's in the chicken Kabbalah. Mm-hmm. Talks about Elohim is the root. Hold on. This guy went and found this transcript and he translated it. He found it in Mexico somewhere and he switched it. And E-L is the root word for deity. E-L-O-H is a feminine singular in others words, a female deity. I am is the plural ending for all things masculine. masculine plural yes so so Elohim, they were male and female female and male elves yeah. gods yes yes mm-hmm. so elohim should be translated either gods and goddesses or dual gender deity later on in verse right. 26 and 27 the elohim even referred to themselves as plural meaning gods and goddesses not just one now here's another really weird thing is that in some of the older older beliefs and some of the older stories about people um and even in the ancient greeks and i can't remember who told the story but they have told told it and there's also an african in africa some tribe in africa that has the story but it's a story about how people were originally both genders both sexes and we yes. were split into two and the spirit and, is two 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 right the spirit is both male and female yes that's a whole idea of a twin soul is your you know other but the one that yes. you are split from. But the thing is, is okay, but really, so it could be that the LOM are male and female. That could be the original form is male and female. Uh, could be the hermaphrodite uh, energy. So, um, we don't know but uh but we do know that in our psyche still exists that male and female because uh we're in the world of polarity okay uh, by the way when we when we are fully in the fifth dimension or the e5 i call it frequency five when we're fully there I think it's going to be more pronounced that we're we're going to be more balanced, okay? Um, because it's funny that people from my people from where I'm from, um, often people think they are more like the opposite sex. Like um, they frequently get mistaken for the opposite sex in chat. But what it is, is they're more in the middle. So uh, they're like less, <laughs> it, it confuses people. Because I think we're more towards the middle, you know, in our psyches. That we're not, you know, com- we're not as polarized. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. I think we're less polarized than I hope we people. are. You know, that's actually a one of the characteristics of borderline personality disorder is distorted black and white thinking patterns. Mm -hmm. And you know what one of the other characteristics are? A false sense of identity. How many people do you think have struggled with identity? I know I used to, but my psychologist is actually going to do a reevaluation compared to back when I was on drugs and alcohol for my identity and my disordered borderline personality back then um, because I was under the influence of hard drugs and alcohol. I wasn't even, you know, and they call alcohol spirits. And so you're under the influence of another spirit, um, which can cause you to say and do things that you wouldn't normally do, maybe in well, your right a, mind. A lot of people are inst- have what I call the instant asshole syndrome. You just add alcohol and suddenly yeah. you're an asshole. 
I got my dad one of those stickers the one sitting put it on his toolbox. What instant, instant asshole? asshole just add alcohol. <laughs> really? Because that's my saying from way back. I got him a sticker and he put it on a magnet and put it on his toolbox. <laughs> so somebody did do that. I'm gonna I'm actually gonna um I think I'm gonna print that up because that is my saying. Instant asshole, just add alcohol. <laughs> and that some people are like that they're they're fine then they get have to the alcohol and them a, and they're absolute idiots have you ever heard um this saying uh a drunk man's words are sober man's thoughts because it's like uh i say uh, you know, sometimes people won't say how they really feel or what they're really thinking. Or if you really want to tell someone to just fuck off, instead of just doing it, we try to sugarcoat it and be nicer than what we really want to say. That's something Trina was even talking about on the Milky Way Cell Tribe. I popped in there for a little bit last night. I had a minute. And she was talking about when they do Who's trauma Trina work with, again? The, with the kids. She was talking about doing trauma work with the kids and letting them say what they really wanted to say to their abusers instead of being programmed to to hush hush and um, not speak up, not say things. That's the way I saw it even. But she was saying that they I said, oh, so we can let people know how we really feel instead of suppressing things. And I think. That might be part of what's going on with me, that I suppress shit and was told not to say things all my life and not have these feelings. I think that's and, all of us, yeah. angry is wrong. Even we, Look at that. It just went again. There's balloons. Happy birthday to Scotty. What the hell's going there on? There he is. That's Where confetti. Where those balloons come from? I don't know. Why does it do that? <laughs> what is going on around here? It does it when I do something with my hands. <laughs> Something's going on with the AI. And this is on StreamYard. It does that on on my Prism live streaming. I mean, I'm not on Prism right now. That's tripped me out because it's only done it on your channel. Did anybody else see this? Or am I losing my mind? I saw it. <laughs> I've been seeing these big um, um, lights. Uh, I I don't know. It looks like an orb, but it looks like of a, a spirit. <laughs> it looks like a spirit. When I was out on the prairie riding my bicycle the other day, I saw it a lot. I saw when I took my one. little trip out after speaking in tongues, I saw I was surrounded by light beings. Yeah. I thought they were stars, but one of them was me. From the, it was light. another one of me. Isn't that bizarre? Maybe you're seeing another one of you. I don't know. But you know that is what my Mayan teacher used to say in a greeting. He say he would say, "I am another one of you." That's one of their greetings. Mayan greeting: "I am another one of you." That's what well, we all are. Yeah, and we're all actually mirror reflections of each other. Remember, I told you I got mirror glasses. The polarized glasses, since we're not having any distorted thinking anymore. No more polarities. There's no more dark and, and light. See, those are the mirror effect glasses. I couldn't even find the rainbow ones, so we got straight up mirrors. By the way, I'm holding up one of my, one of my creations made out of plarn. Like the Plarn hat that I have, it's um, cut up plastic bags, colorful ones. If you have any colorful plastic bags to donate to me for these projects, please let me know because I can't find colorful ones hardly anymore. But um, this is a 
holder for like a water bottle or whatever you need it to hold. Um, but that's another Plarn item that I made. Um, <clears throat> I'm kind of proud of my Plarn stuff. Um, yeah, I do like that. My, okay, we've got a lot of people in this world right now in this, and I think we're all done. A lot of us are done with people who are what I would call whiners, okay? Who are butthurt, looking for an excuse to be butthurt, a way to be butthurt, you know? Um, I think that this is going to be something that is going to turn around soon. That uh, people are just done with entitled folks, you know? Folks that feel that they're so entitled that they should uh, be able to rewrite what you do to please them, you know. Um, and I think one of the things we're going to see, I don't know, it's not going to be a fast death, probably a slow death. But I think we're going to start to see the death of the butthurt tolerance. Um, victim archetype? The victim, yeah, I think that's going to start to. I think it is. I hope it is because I, we all. Because I think we've had it. <laughs> are are uh, we are in control of our life? No one is. Joe Biden is not in control of you. He does not dictate what you can do every single day. So uh, it's like the victim mentality. Card. Not yet. Anyway, we haven't gotten that bad yet. So. I've done what? lots of videos about the victim mentality and rising up from that because honestly, my daughter was in that state and I stayed there for a very long time. Um, it's a tricky one to get out of, especially if people fall into addictions. I see it very prevalent in um, addicts that are still in their addiction, they will play the victim card for everything under the sun as to why they can't do um, anything. And that's just a very commonality with... with uh, and the thing is, if you believe you can't do anything, then you can't. Exactly. Every time you say, I can't, or you speak that your children can't do things, you are limiting yourself and your children and everyone around you. My aunt used to do it with my grandpa and say, oh, he can't do that. And I would start to say, you know, stop saying he can't do things just because he's got Alzheimer's and stuff. He can't go out and bring in a whole um, wheelbarrow full of firewood, but he could carry in a couple logs at a time or even one if he wants to do it and he can make himself useful. He's still able to do things. Stop saying he can't. Do you know how powerful even those words are? When we play those cards of saying that we're not able to do things, we are giving our power away when we let anybody else have control over our life or speaking the I can't words. I wore for we were allowed to wear a women's a purple, a purple shirt for Women's History Month because March is Women's History Month. And uh, it says I am on it and on the back is fearfully and wonderfully made which is psalm 139 and something I am fearfully and wonderfully made so that's even the power of your affirmations and speaking with mercury and communication if there's going to be um communication issues make sure that your communication issues don't happen with yourself and others as far as speaking um things, untruths into existence, limiting ourselves. Well, that's it. And you know what? Who's really big on that is one, one with all. She's in here sometimes. One with all is really big. I talked to her on the phone. Um, 
thing about that is she's managed to manifest a lot, even her twin flame, finally. Uh, so, and she's saying what people don't really understand is every time you say, actually, we need to do a show on that too. Um, well, I was just talking to how the vibrations about are set up to where what you, you know, it's not just what you say, but it's a vibration of when, how you are, when you say it. Yeah. How you and say you it. can manifest your own bad stuff. You can manifest a depressed life by keep saying, I'm so depressed. And you won't get out of that stage. And the yeah, more a, you tell yourself, I'm so fucked up and I'm beyond repair, you limit your own healing. Mm -hmm. You limit your so own there's self. There's a difference in the feeling of, for instance, oh, I love you. From, I love you. That is a whole different vibe. Same words. But a different vibe. Think about that for a minute. How are you saying things to yourself? Not just the things you say. Because if you're sitting there going, I am powerful, strong, and invincible. Yes. You know, I'm I'm powerful. I'm enough. Uh, you know, I'm that's powerful. a popular say. I am enough. I am or enough. Or is it, I'm enough. I'm enough. I'm enough. I'm enough. I'm enough. No, I am, I am powerful, enough. strong, invincible. I'm beautiful. You know, or I'm powerful. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> How does that? Yes. You? The tone and the energy you give it matters. Mm -hmm. I used to have to tell my daughter to speak up. I was, um, you know, I was stocking shelves at my job and putting the children's dove body wash and things. And it has I am statements on it for the little kids. And I thought that was so wonderful that they could, while they've got their shampoo, you know, and they're learning in the bathtub, <laughs> the little kids, they could say, I am brave. I am strong. I am capable. I am wise. I am kind. <laughs> That's right. And um, because <laughs> there was something or other we were talking about. And she says, well, well, how, you know, and it was just all the wrong. It was, it was just kind of the wrong. She hasn't quite gotten to know me that well. So she was coming up with examples that wouldn't wouldn't really work. I can't really imagine. But um, uh, like, for instance, what if somebody blindfolded you and took you away and then uh, took a blindfold off and and it was, er, you know, everything exactly what you wanted. And I'm there like, I'd be terrified because anybody that had put a blindfold, I, first of all, I wouldn't let them put a, take me away or put a blindfold on me because that's really threatening. And I would be terrified of what they were giving me if they did it that way, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, it's like, but that's because why? Because I have COPD. Right, it's, or C, not COPD, it's C, CPTSD. CPTSD. My dad had COPD. <laughs> My dad does too. What the hell? Dad, are you here? <laughs> because I have PTSD. All these damn letters. That's the thing. Is there fr freaking bi, gay, lesbian, garble? Give over we go gurgle community. But I just call them the alphabet soup community. Okay. It's not because I don't love people. It's because there are two genders. I'm sorry. Get your head out your butt. Okay. There are two genders as of right now. And you might you you might be um you might be signaling one or signaling the other or even signaling both. But there's really only two. And and everything else 
is just a it's like a preference it's not a born in the dna thing and and it's okay to have a preference but when you tell me it's a gender i'm gonna say bullshit and then that's supposed to be hateful no it's not hateful it's just the freaking truth but you're allowed to have preferences why the hell do you think it has to be a gender why are you calling it a gender it's not a gender no <gasps> you know gender was for animals in my mom's day when they started that what gender are you she said oh no gender is for animals it's male and female animals male and female that's animals it's men and women for people well look at this they've started male and female for people why because they see us as animals okay think about that think about that a minute they changed that classification in my mom's time it was different there were women and men, ladies and gentlemen. Then all of a sudden there were males and females, but no, that was what they, that was cattle and stuff. That was livestock. Yes. So what are they doing here? What little mind game are they trying to play with us now, huh? Because I, I, I choose not to play any of the games. I opted right. out. Me too. I don't I'm, want to even I don't even want to acknowledge a lot of the stuff because I don't want it to manifest in my reality. I think sometimes with a lot of these things, ignorance I, might might be bliss. I, I read it on chat, Dolly, and accidentally said it when I meant to say PTSD. Complex oh, she did yeah my dad had copd it he had emphysema <laughs> yeah no, and, and ocd that's another one we've got all these now we're defining ourselves by all oh, these Lord letters what the fuck you know this Consumers. is crazy i've got it i not i am not i am not my my issue there i'm not I just happen to have problems with that, okay? But I'm not that. That is not my label for myself. Ludo, May. Yeah, I don't even smoke, so don't worry about me. I don't have... <laughs> I think they are bugs. What are bugs? What are bugs, Mark? What? What is it? We need to stop bugging. Oh, you don't want to know what Scotty's doing, what, what Dolly's doing to Scotty over December there. December 29. You know, Chiron's in retrograde for like half the year. Chiron's I've in retrograde? I've kind of been trying to chart what's happening. What would retrograde Chiron look like? That's uh, a question. You're what's Chiron in retrograde no like? Confronting old wounds, that's for damn sure. Replay of old wounds. Yes. That makes sense. Okay, Stuff that, you've been ignoring, probably. That abuse, makes probably. sense, because that's what we're doing. A lot of people are rehashing old wounds right now and finally getting through them like I am. I thought it was all over it, but this thing with my parents is coming back up for me to finally. Oh, it stuck. Forgive. It's always coming up because mm -hmm. it's always going to guide us more back to healing and growth. Even when mm -hmm. we think we're done, we're not fucking done. Just well, that's what I call the onion layers. Yes. You know, peeling the onion layers are melting the iceberg. What's in your subconscious? Although I've got oh. to say, my oh, subconscious, Chiron. one of the best oh. things you can say to yourself as an affirmation is, my unlimited subconscious is, how did that go? 
And that was Elmer O'Locker. Elmer O'Locker's channel. And I want to say Elmer O'Locker's channel is great. Um, he has some very good videos. I recommend him. I don't have his link. I very much recommend you look up Elmer O'Locker. Okay, spelled just Elmer like Elmer Fudd, O, and Locker like what you put your books in at school. Look up his channel. Um, anyway, go ahead. Go ahead, Lady uh, Heather. Um, yeah, uh, Chiron retrograde. Dang it, this blasted computer. I just want to scream sometimes. I can't stand it. It yeah, messes I, up while I'm trying to type this damn word. Okay, Chiron. Y'all, do you know where Chiron is in your chart? Because that's a very important placement. When I do people's charts, I usually will tell them, Chiron, I will tell them your sun sign, your moon sign, your rising sign. There's balloons again. Yay, we got some balloons. Your rising sign, we're right on track. Maybe whenever that happens with the balloons and confetti, whatever's there going you go. on. Wow, that's we're, weird. We're right on track. The balloons. Your sun, moon, and rising sign, as well as your midheaven and your um Chiron placement. Your Chiron placement is so important because that is your core wound that you need to work on. My Chiron is in Aries. I'll use that example. My Chiron's in Aries in the third house. I struggle. I, Chiron in Aries is the wound of self. I've read some of this about Chiron in Aries. I struggle with feeling unheard <laughs> i've dealt with this in my whole life in my family and it's been a serious thing that i have to work on what would and that be self would be uh just who you are yeah and so if i've done your chart ever i hope you saved it because it's i don't think well i thought i did but exactly. i can't find it it's gotten buried i think in my yeah, you gotta save huge it in a pile of stuff special folder um yeah i gotta look at it again i gotta find out what my rising is to my progressed rising and stuff good I night still, love you too hope the trip yeah and i hope your trip does go well i'm um, actually finding chiron in pisces thank you well um, you know what you 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 also as far as yourself you're kind of i don't want i'm not saying this in a bad like a mean way but if you're not very careful that would also mean See, your daughter is a very strong personality. Yeah, she is. Don't lose yourself. Thank you. That is the wound of self. <laughs> Chiron and Aries. The wound of self. And you know, Chiron is in Pisces right now. So any babies born during this time, um, I could I could whip out my chart and look at this later and see when Chiron entered Pisces if it was during COVID time. Because Chiron is not really a fast mover either. Um You know what? We have got to deal with this. You guys. I changed my life. I changed my living space. You guys really i'm tired of hearing that you're living in a place that's not suited to you please please consider working on manifesting a better place you don't have to make it the rich carlton or anything you don't have to make it uh you know a mansion 
but I manifested this place. And it makes it made a lot of difference. I think it had a lot to do with whether I lived or died. Okay. As a matter of fact, I saw myself dying in the other place. Please start working on manifesting the better place for yourself. Okay, because if you're getting that you're in the wrong place, that's a warning. It is. You know, you're you're being warned of something. Even in relationships, not even just in a home. Yes. If you are in a relationship in your life where you are not are not uh happy, honestly, like honestly, these are times to make those decisions. These are times to speak up about things because YOLO, you only live this one body one time. <laughs> so you gotta make the decisions that are right for your path and your calling. Absolutely. I I feel like you've got to be true. That's part of being the true to yourself thing. Yeah. Is that you've got to, you've got to be uh, taking up your space somewhere. Ooh. Yeah. I hit a button. Huh? <laughs> you gotta be taking up yourself. Your spit, but what am I talking about? Take up your space somewhere. Take up your space. <laughs> Isn't that cute? What I did there. Um, take your place at the head of your own table because that's where you belong. Take the place at the helm of your own ship because that's where you belong. Take your place driving your own car, driving your own vehicle, driving your own woo ship. Because that's where you belong. Yeah. Okay? yeah. You don't belong in a nasty, run-down, shitty place with a hole in the floor or a hole in the ceiling or or bugs or, or black mold or crap of any kind. Nasty neighbors. You don't. You don't deserve that. This is that. where knowing your worth comes in, wouldn't you think? Mm-hmm. Knowing and, that, that the universe doesn't want you to have good things. Lots it, of people go with a more simple life. I think this truly is like we are able to manifest things, right? But it's all about being um, we can manifest and the universe does want to reward us with things and have things. Like for me, a part of my journey was getting my driver's license before other doors and opportunities will open up for this. Like I was almost ordered. I was ordered and told if I want other doors to open up, I have to accomplish these tasks first. So I had to make a list and check it twice and find out what I was willing to do um, to achieve these goals. Because we could have, like, think about it, like, goals and intentions. Get your handy-dandy notebook out. This is Blue's Clues. And you say, for 2024, even though we're already three months in here, we're just after the Lunar New Year and all that. We're springing into the spring equinox here. And if you really want to put some things in action, contemplate this during Mercury Retrograde. Mm -hmm. Think about all the things that you want to manifest. Write down your goals because those are where you're going to become your intentions. And so my main goal is to one day find a place where I can have peace and quiet and grow all of my own herbs and things to make my Me own too. potions and products. And I really think I'm going to get that. But I think it's coming in stages. I think this place was a good place for me to heal. Yes. But I think eventually I'm going to be moving to an even better place. Yeah. You, yes, you will. I think it all... Like, I was meant to stay here in my parents' house after my daughter transitioned. But I'm getting a lot like of moving okay. on stuff. Moving on from the room she passed away in. Moving mm -hmm. its... They tore down the... That's that her and really her. hard. Living in yes. the room she passed away in. Yeah. I, I moved in here like... 
I thought I needed to be right where she, this is her resting place. So Chloe, um, Chloe, Chloe, my love, my sweet. I know I lived like that for a long time. Stuff stopped me. Stuff stopped me. You really have to, whatever it is in your head, you have to really work on that girl. Then that's what you have to do. Whatever it is and whatever it takes to change that. Because you don't have to live by your old programming. You can actually delete that programming. You know, but, some of the things that I listen to, you can listen to um, guided meditations that have I am affirmations in them during the day. One of the great channels is one of my subscribers, The Gathering Within. And she does very short meditations with I am affirmation. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should work on that, D. Just get some I Actually, am I think I'm I'm going to make a meditation, some meditation videos. Yeah, you can play like your music that's in your intro. We'll make it a short video. You can make it, people can loop it if they want. But seriously, um, listen to them while you're sleeping even with subliminal uh, I am's. And it'll really, really, Chloe. Talk to me, Chloe. Things... I may be able to help you because I know that I had to pretty much, I felt like I had to blow it apart with uh, with uh, C C forty or something. I I don't know. I had to uh, sandblast it out of me. But you can do that. I know. I I did it. Look, I was stuck where I was for eighteen years. 18 years in that place nearly killed me. I don't want that place to kill you. Okay. I don't want you to have to come back here and do it again. Here's one of these positive affirmations from the gathering within channel. No, we don't. You know, I was. I'll talk to you privately, this. sweetheart. I'll talk to you privately. Okay. I'm sorry. With my psychologist about what constant verbal abuse and being talked down to did to my brain and how much programming it took for me to be able to say go from saying I am worthy to I am worthy to realize that I am worthy I do deserve good things exactly I, I need I am worthy worthy of the best things in life i am worthy of happiness uh, the gathering I, within i i don't have any doubt that that's happening i've lived through that i've gotten out of it she's gotten out of it we've gotten out of it i can't i can't do it here on the stream i don't think you really want me to anyway but I can put you on to some things that I listen to that help change my mind. One of the things that did, okay, I'm going to introduce you. One of the things I'll introduce to everybody is the concept of grace. Grace is totally unearned. Grace is a good that is given to you regardless of what you've done or have not done. And when you live in the law of grace, things just come to you. Okay. But if we feel, if something in us feels like we don't have the right or we're not good enough or we don't have the right. And just like we're saying, if you get told often enough that you're not worth anything, you're not worthy, you're, you know, you get programmed that way. And we've all been programmed. All of us. Look at all the piece of shit people that have got it really nice. They think they deserve it. They think it's owed to them. That's why they have it. They were never programmed that way like we were. They they believe 
that they deserve theirs and yours too. So there are ways to handle that and there are ways to delete the old programs. And I have tried to teach you some of them. And we'll go back into it again. So I guess I'll have another show on that. And it'll be about how to delete things. Yeah, EFT tapping is another one. There's lots of ways to do it. Yeah. I really well, recommend EFT is another one. It didn't do much for me. I mean, I wasn't much for it, but some some people get very good results with it. Um, me, and that's um, a really good breath work. Other ship is the one breath I work. all the time. And because of going out into the world, I'm just now getting back on track with my self-care and nothing is more important than that. I'm really realizing I started getting severe chronic pain. I wasn't getting enough sleep. I have been cranky if I don't have my naps and my sleep. And then it's best if I stay away from everyone when I'm having cranky moments. So no one take anything personally. If I disappear for a while, don't take it personally, please. Sometimes I, I just share I sure a don't. freaking astrology wheel over on Instagram and I get out of there. I don't want to scroll. I don't care what's going on anywhere else. I just want to share what spirit called me to share and get the fuck out of there. Because mm -hmm. I can't um, handle all of this activity all the time. My own brain feels like it's going to explode. Mm -hmm. My watch list is the size of, it could go around the world 75 times of all the things people give me to watch. So I don't know. I just am doing what I can. Yeah, I know. And and if you actually <laughs> do manage to make it on social media, then you got all this info coming at you and you don't even know where the hell you are anymore. You just get buried in it. When I, you know, like 5,000 emails and, and 40,000, yeah. you know, things being sent to you and just, just all kinds of shit. So, um so Chloe says, no one has ever told me I'm not worthy of all my heart's desires. Well, do you know that if you were ever in any life Catholic, the part of their mass, the, the people are supposed to answer back, we are not worthy. Staying connected to yourself is so important, especially through these eclipses. Sorry. <laughs> tapping. Tapping would get you. Uh, what I think we need to do when I was doing that tapping, I was doing so well. When I was doing tapping every single day, when I was you need working, to do a video about tapping, then girl. Tapping and if that was your jam, day. then you need to do it, man. And then you need to do a video about it so other people can do it too. Tap in your uh pressure points, stress alert. Stress relief for children. You can download the app. It's called the Tapping Solution. Mm -hmm. Other ship has an app too, but these are free on their Tapping mm -hmm. Solution channel. Then there are also frequencies, which John has talked about on his channel. You can wow. download uh, an app called Z App, which has frequencies to everything, including that kind of thing, including the psychological stuff, not just the physical ailments, but they do have some psychological ailments that can be healed. That And then there's also videos on YouTube that are for exactly those reasons. But if you were ever in a life where you were Catholic, you were made to say that you were not worthy over and over and over and over and over again. Yes. And what kind of what kind of effect would that have over and over again? And why would they do that? Well, because they can control people who feel they're not worthy. They would make you keep asking for forgiveness. Please forgive us. When Jesus already said you're all forgiven. You're so all forgiven. You you're all already that. forgiven. Uh, yeah. Yes. They over and over again. We're not you. worthy. We're not. You know, it's yes. like you have got to break that. If it wasn't in this life, you have had many words. And it can be a lot more subtle than 
saying that right out loud. Sometimes people are just showing you that you're yes. not worthy. Sometimes yes. it's their actions, you know? It's like you do shit for them and then they're like, thanks, bye, you know, or maybe they don't even thank you. Yeah. Well, and when people lose their worth and their faith in themselves, like, like, you know, some people get so lost in believing in themselves that they need to lift it back up. I've had people of my past exes that needed constant reassurance because their self-esteem and their self-worth, and it, usually it's covered up by a very confident facade ego. So oftentimes that's what happens, is it's so shattered in disillusion. People who have who lost Who is Cody and Satori? Oh, I'm sorry. What? What? I don't know. Dolly's talking about Cody and Satori's have been called out as fakes, and I don't know who that is. I, I'm I can't sorry. Stay I'm... a whole lot longer, D, because I gotta go take my uh, driving test tomorrow to get my driver's oh, license. Oh, really? Yes, I got my new car. I'm I'm getting diffused anyway. I'm getting like I'm trying to see what's going on in chat, and I'm trying to listen to you, and I'm trying to. Do too many things at once anyway, I think. I know. I'm overloaded with way too much going on, to be honest with you. It, it you know what? me out how I'm even across. I really, I got to thank you for being here as long as you have, because we've been here almost three hours long. Well, thank you for having me. I'm, I, you're always welcome I think this here. is going to be a really this star? healing transformational time. I'm not feeling bad energy for this. To be honest with you, good things are happening i'm about yes. to go to the ocean on a holiday and i do not see this as being a bad thing at all no it's gonna be wild it's gonna be crazy but it's not retrograde. gonna be a bad thing all the things that people tell me about mercury retrogrades are like both mine and my daughter's birthdays fall on a mercury retrograde this year and we both get a full moon and my plans are to go to the ocean with her ashes. I feel like it's divinely guided. And I have absolutely no fear with anything. I am not anxious. Lots of people are pushing all their fears and things. Shall, I, shall I tell you what I have been saying for at least 30 years about Mercury Retrograde? Please do. <laughs> Thank you all so Okay, much. Mercury Retrograde. When Mercury is going the regular way, I mean, when things are on a regular day, Mercury is about the physical stuff, okay? The physical riches, the physical communication, the physical money, the physical, you know, all of the things, travel and stuff like that. But when Mercury is in retrograde, this is what I noticed. People would have amazing classes if they were spiritual classes, if they were motivated by helping people, if they, they were in things in the spiritual realm can actually go way better than they normally would. Because I feel what happens there is it's a time for three weeks we're supposed to put down all this material shit that we are absolutely obsessed with and think of on higher terms, okay? We're supposed to think of more spiritual terms. We're supposed to be more free. We're not supposed to be thinking like we normally do. We're not supposed to be doing the things we normally do. We're supposed to be taking a break. Yes, we taking a break. We should be resting. I think of it like, you know, when the dark moon comes, one of my friends that follows the Wiccan tradition in the UK, um, her name is Heather. She told me that there is to be no planting and work during the dark moons, that it's a time of resting and that we can go through the phases and the seasons. So when Mercury's in retrograde, Take a moment to, 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 to wind down, to step away from the 
high-speed chase of information and the high-speed chase of getting things done and things and let since since mercury rules communication be still and let spirit deliver to you what you need learn right. to be still and listen mm -hmm. and truly be present in your world be present in your own body that's i think one of the hardest things that a lot of people can't mm -hmm. say they can't meditate i hear people say that a lot i can't meditate I don't know how to meditate. I've tried and I've tried. That's why guided meditations are so important. Because a lot of us, even kids today that play gaming systems all day long, they don't know how to just sit and be still. Well, or, you know, I got to say, though, um, when you are... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how to be idle myself. I'm really hard at being idle. When I'm awake, I have to be doing something. But I actually, only in the last couple of months, have figured this out. That I got my chair all set up, aimed at the screen of, of my, it's a TV, but it's, I don't ever watch TV on it. I got my easy chair. I got my massage cushion for my back. And I'm sitting there with a cup of something to drink. And Cowboy will crawl up on the arm of my chair. And I will lean back in my recliner and watch something and just chill. And I realized that it had literally been like 20 years. Since I did that, since I just leaned back, watched something, petted the cat, did nothing, but just vegged out, rested, because even when I'm asleep, I've been working. And it blew my mind. <sighs> it blew my mind that that was, the I'm like, wow, this is really nice. Oh, wow, this is what it feels like. Oh, wow, when did I ever do this? God, it's been 20 freaking years. Yeah. Since I had had it like that. To just chill. <laughs> Holy cow. So think about that. I mean, you know, uh, everything's a distraction. We have so many distractions. Find ways to undistract yourself. Hey, Marilena. How you doing, sweetie? We are going to wrap it up, though, because yeah. I am being called away. If you haven't seen me yawn. And I believe it. I believe minutes. it, girl. <laughs> I'm I'm feeling it, even beginning to feel it myself. This has been three hours. It was good. Show and you. it's good to have you over, always. Well, and big hugs. You. I hope you can feel these great big hugs that I'm sending your way. Thank you. Big hugs to all of you. Big hugs. Take care of yourself, and I'll take care of myself. And Love you know what? You've, you've been doing a orders. <laughs> you've been doing a good job, though. You've been doing a wonderful job. I really want to congratulate you. Thank I you. I can see you doing that. I can see you doing it. Oh. I just am so excited. I feel, to, if you want to know the truth, I feel like a teenager about my driver's license. <laughs> I will too when I get mine. With my mom. And I'm so happy I got my, I got my wallet back. My wallet oh, finally yeah, surfaced. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. on that. But the lesson must be over. It must be over. Whatever it was doing must be gone over now. Now yeah. I got to figure out what that was. But <laughs> It's like, I, I'm like, yay, okay. It just was showed up in a weird way. stuff in there? Did what? you have cards in there that you needed? Yeah. There is a lesson behind that. Mm-hmm. What's the lesson? Well, I know that some people are going to say, why, why am I carrying the cards? But I carried them because that day I was going to get my uh, birth certificate. So I oh. needed them. So I happened to need all those cards. So that was the very day I had all those cards was the day that this happened. I'm like, 
yikes. And all I had then was my birth certificate. I had my birth certificate though, you know? So um, <laughs> I had to have all those cards for, because you have to have cards for other card to get other cards. Yeah, I don't recommend that you carry all your cards and don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't put all your eggs on a in regular one day. Don't do that. But you should get all your ducks in a row. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, uh, definitely. Uh, trying to get my life filed and sorted here. You know, I've been really big on that in the last few months, filing and sorting out everything. So, um, that's good. Okay, and and once again, uh, I love you, dear. Love I you can too. see that you're progressing, no matter what it seems like, and don't feel bad about what you have to do to take care of yourself ever. Thank okay. you. Love you. Bye bye. Love you too. See you all later. Happy eclipse season and April Fool's the Mercury retrograde from the trickster himself. Mm -hmm. Peace out. Mm hmm. That would remind me of the Hyoka empath. The Hyoka. Exactly. You know what? I was going to say that, but I didn't want to interrupt her. Is that I call Mercury retrograde the Hyoka. That's the Hyoka. The contrary clown. Mercury retrograde is Hyoka energy. Absolutely. 100%. I always call him the little Hayoka. The little Hayoka is dancing backwards again. You know what that means. Life is not going to be same old, same old. It's going to be different. Marilena. Marilena. La, 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 la. Marilena. <laughs> uh, chain that pencil bag to my bag. Your pencil bag. What pencil bag? Hmm. I saw your message. Oh, well, at least I'm still here. I'm still on. Purple with a window. Cool. Yeah. My, um, you know what? Uh, oh, you're talking about your bag. Yeah. Your, um, license and stuff. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, the Hayoka sacred crown. Exactly. That's, I always call him the little Hayoka dancing backwards. Um, We, we have uh, that side of us, all of us, okay, have the trickster side that we play tricks on ourselves. We do that all the time. We play tricks on ourselves, don't we? So, you know, <laughs> it's kind of funny because um, we... Actually, how many times have I said we we can actually be our own worst enemy in that regard? Do stuff, do stuff to ourselves. But if you can, if you can figure out what the lesson is, you can get it to stop finally. So um, <laughs> I haven't quite entirely unpacked what what the whole uh wallet could you, you the, the whole wallet debacle was about yet but um maybe though i keep getting the feeling that i needed to change my bank card yet again like somebody's been kind of messing with me and um i don't really use my card I don't use my card full on. Like I usually use some other, app. I go through some other app, you know, I'm trying to think of what I, what I bought that was with the card actually that they would even be able to get those numbers. I don't know. Hmm. But, um, yeah, I usually t double check, double check, triple check that I have my wallet, quadruple check. And that's why I like this thing. And I, I run around with this thing around my neck and my phone on that. 
Number one is it holds it out away from my body. So it's not like right next to me making microwaving my body. Okay. And I also can't forget it. It's bit, it's like it sticks out. It's like real obvious. Oh, there's my phone. You you not, you know what? When I tried to take my phone just as my phone and maybe just a little case or so, I was losing that mofo all the time. Now I put it in this and I hang it around my neck and I can't lose the, the effort. Okay. And that's one of the reasons I use those. And, and also they're very handy because it helps hold it while, while you're typing. So. Um, Angel wings. How you doing, sweethearts? Love to you. You missed everything. It's all over for now. We're just about, we're kind of wrapping it, wrapping it up because I got stuff I got to do tomorrow and I'm already, uh, you know, kind of tired. It's, uh, it's 1144 here. So, um, kind of late, but, uh, I'm glad you made it before we, before it's all over. Um, there's some pretty good information in the show, so please play it back and check it out. The hat I'm wearing is Plarn. It's made out of plastic yarn made from plastic shopping bags. It, instead of going into the recycle, or rather, they don't recycle them. That If you throw them away, they don't get recycled. Um, instead of going into the landfill or into the sea or something, I have turned them, I, I am turning it into yarn to make various goods out of. And by the way, I have washed these in, I have machine washed these and they've machine washed just fine. I wouldn't put them in the dryer though. I wouldn't advise that, but I would say you can put plarn objects in the washing machine, just like anything else. Um, so anyway, yeah, the solar activity, we got all kinds of shit going on. Wait a minute. Let me make sure I'm subbed so that I can go see what you're talking about. Okay, honey. And also we'll give you a wrench. Okay. We're going to give you a wrench. You're looking kind of blue. Okay. There we go. Yeah, plarn. Plastic yarn. You're welcome, sweetheart. I don't think you're going to do us any harm. Now, remember... If you're blue, it means I'm trusting you not to be an asshole, okay? <laughs> Don't be a jerk. Be nice. Okay? Be nice. Everybody, that's everybody. That means I trust you enough to, to let you have a wrench. Then, you know, I trust you. I, I think you're going to keep yourself... Yep, keep yourself in check. Exactly, that's what I think. I think you can do it. I'd have faith in you. So, um, yeah, good old Plarn. And you know what? I got to say, uh, someday I'll be a guest on other, I, well, I've been a guest on people like John's show and so on. Someday I may be a guest on other shows. And. Uh, That'll be interesting, but for now, this is my show, and um, I want to hear, you can bring up troubles, you can bring up problems in the world, you can bring, I, I will bring them up on the show, but remember, I want to hear your take on how we can make that better. Okay, because this is a transformational show about how we get better, how we do better. 
do better. I mean, that's like one of my things. Yeah, we need to do better then. Okay, and how do we do better? So uh, I am also going to put in another plug. Please uh, take a look at my description. Realize that I now have a Patreon. You can join for free or you can pay a whole dollar. I think I'm worth more than that, but I think a dollar isn't really too grabby. That is the absolute cheapest they'll let me charge is either free or a dollar. If you are, uh, if you join my Patreon, you're going to get some perks. One of the perks you're going to get is you're going to get an extra card at the card or free card readings. Anytime I do a free card reading, you're going to get an extra card. So um, that that's one thing. And then there's going to be more perks as we go on. Eventually, there's going to be uh, some freebies like some of my art. There's going to be some freebies like we're going to have a contest among the uh, people that are members for a free Goddess Guide Me reading or a free full reading. Um, stuff like that. So, um, and if you like cool stuff, like some of the stuff I've shown you, uh, they've got awesome prices on decks of cards at, at Timu, and you don't have to give them your personal stuff. You can go through PayPal or Klarna or Afterpay or something. Um, and also I have Pi Coins, which is blockchain that you can mine from your phone. You can actually have some blockchain for free. You just have to click a button every 24 hours. If you do that, please let me know so we can be in each other's circles and mine even more buy coins. Okay, and this program is sponsored by moi. If you like to help support the show, Click any of those links and follow along. And my PayPal is there too. Love you. Uh, take care of yourself. Okay. And love yourself. Mm -hmm. You are divine. So dream well and dream big. The truth is where you find it. Hope you're always finding some on my show. And I'll see you tomorrow night, probably tomorrow night, Monday, because we're here Sunday, Monday, and Wednesday. Okay, I'm off. Have a wonderful night.